I'm a lifestyle, I'm the new thing with a bright smile Catch me when I'm out in public, always show them love and I know they love it Give you a reason to love me this season, I'm taking my chances, I hope it enhances my Alrighty, welcome to Romero Records Podcast Today we have on, you can introduce yourself Michael Kurt Bay with Press Pause Images Awesome Gotta pour myself a glass of water first What's this? Well, not a glass, but So, Mike has brought on, what was this called? I have no idea how to pronounce that, bro. Uh, it looks like Didamana. I'm going to go with that. It's a small batch tequila. He says it's the Rocks tequila. It is the Rocks. There's literally a picture of the guy with the bottle underneath it at the liquor store. Oh, wow. That's, that's, that's how I knew it was his. But, yeah, I don't usually drink, but... I guess we're gonna have to crack it open just because he brought it. <laughs> hey man, sing it to my own. You're more than welcome to sing it to my own. We're gonna do all this. Be my guest. All right. Literally, be my guest. <laughs> so Mike, I um, found him on Instagram just like everybody else that we bring on, and uh, this dude is a phenomenal photographer. Absolutely amazing. That's that's real sweet to say. That's that's touching. <laughs> You're a nice guy. There, there you go. go. A little bit of self hatred for you. you. <laughs> it's like a, like it like it's a product, right? <laughs> We're pitching this today, people. Yeah. So the rock, if you get the chance to see this, by all means, we are displaying your stuff. All right. All right, buddy. Cheers. A little bite to it. It's kind of smooth, though. I feel like they already mixed in the light, uh, the lime and the salt. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It kind of breaks my heart. <laughs> you know, tequila's supposed to hurt you, <laughs> right? Yeah, that was that was pretty smooth. That was that's pretty decent. Maybe that's what he. That's maybe what he wanted. Something that you know people just enjoy it and they just want to drink it. <laughs> that, that's what. That's not what drinking's about. But, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, that's that's not at all. These, these shot glasses are pretty dope. No, yeah, no, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, I had the choice between these or just regular clear. The original idea, I was going to get a bunch of little Don Julios. Mm-hmm. Right? Just and like the, the small little shot glasses? Yeah, we're just going to meet in the middle. Ah. Right, we're just going to line these bad boys up, <laughs> and we're just going to meet in the middle. The quality of the podcast just going south, <laughs> right? Slowly but surely was the general idea. Oh, but, man. you know, this... Um, this works. It does work. You know, it, it definitely works. Work. They're out. Apparently, they can't get in for the distributor or nothing. Mm. Completely gone. So, just sign of the times. That's wild. Have you seen, like, Corona has, like, the um, the beer company has just, like, completely, like, gone down. Like, people just aren't drinking Coronas. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, before the uh, before the lockdown, I was pretty bad. Every time, you know, I'd be out somewhere. Mm. Didn't want a beer. I need a Corona. <laughs> right there. <laughs> You know, hard times for the company, boys. We gotta take care of them. I think it's wild. Like, why? <laughs> why are people associating the disease with the drink? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, you know, I think. Um, I think it's really one of those. Not everybody's a savage. Yeah, yeah. Right. So they go up there, and the last thing they want to do is drink a Corona. If anybody get like offended or upset or anything by it, um, I'm just a jerk. <laughs> you know, I use it as a conversation starter. You see what I'm drinking here? Let's yeah. let's have a talk. <laughs> Right? Yeah, that's a good way to kick it off. Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Do you go out like a lot around like the Memphis area as far as like um, all the bars and stuff like that? You know, it's really one of those things of when I was a kid, and I mean kid, I was mean like, you know, late teens, early 20s kid in our eyes, I guess, right? Uh, one of those things of I was I partied a lot at the houses, you know, it was a lot of house parties and stuff like that and everything. Didn't really go to a lot of bars. Mm. And then I got older and I got kids. And I appreciated the idea of going to a bar. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not as loud and crazy as a house party. Um, you kind of just be low-key and just chill and just sip something and mind your own business. Is it something I frequently do, though? I appreciate it. I don't really do it a lot. Mm. Um, just because I you know, have a full-time job on top of um, the second job, which is the photography. Which I'll never leave the full-time first job because it you know, has a pension. So. You don't walk. You don't walk away from that. What do you do? 
Um, I work uh, working schools. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. <laughs> right, <yes. laughs> but uh, it's really one of those things of, um, for the most part, when I get out, it's typically uh, photography okay. related, right? I, I am going to a show and um, I'll get there early so I can sit down and you know, just have a beer, just yeah, chill yeah. and relax. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, really get crazy. But you, know, you have one, and you're sitting there for like an hour, yeah, or two hours before everything starts. Like nobody's even in there. It's just like you and the you and the bartender, and you just you're just taking a minute to really sit there and just mellow out and get a little calm. You know, hide from all the. I got three very high energy, very very active, very on top of you, just choking you kids. <laughs> Love them to death. I made them that way. But it's really one of those things of, it's nice to get that little quiet time. And yeah. then you do, then you have to get your mind right photography as well. It's mm. for me personally, going out to like these music spots and I'm taking a shot. It's, it's easy to kind of, it's, it sounds mean, but it's kind of easy to get a shot of something happening, mm-hmm. right? Something's happening, point and click. We live in a world of cameras. Everybody knows that you pull out your phone, you snap a picture, you're going to get a picture. Yeah. There's a difference, though, between taking a snapshot and capturing a moment. And you got to put your head in the right space. I, I spend that time usually looking through all their work. I'll, I'll sit there and I'll look at somebody's whole Instagram feed, anything they put up, listening to their music. Before I came here, went through the went through the catalog, just got up, examined all that, anything you had online, went through it all. Kind of understand you better, kind of understand what's going on. Yeah, yeah. See what I'm kind of getting into, and that's just sort of the way I treat everything over study over analyze getting the right mindset so this way i know whenever i step into it you know i'm ready to go you yeah. know we kind of even if it's like maybe a one-way relationship right now right hopefully by the end of it we'll be able to showcase that in the shots mm-hmm. and that's how you get that hopefully get that emotion or get something you know of real value and worth out of the shoot as opposed to just a snapshot of hey i'm a guy on stage yeah and you can actually find those moments of weakness or self-reflection or um power where they if they feel strong and excited and yeah yeah you know that energy coming off them you know you know what that looks like you know what they're kind of casual anything you put them on facebook is fake <laughs> anything you put on instagram it's fake they're all like look how happy i am yeah. right and you already know that if you see that you don't take the picture yeah. You know, if you see this kind of fake pose, this kind of like thing like this, you know, whole mm-hmm. leg spread and everything like that, that's fake. You don't, you know, I know already that's how that person is normally. Mm-hmm. Discard it. Okay. Don't even don't even click the button, keep your finger off the shutter. As soon as that moment fades, right, and that facade always drops, you can't hold that forever. That's when you fire. Interesting. So there you go. <laughs> so when it comes to like all the venues and stuff like that, do you um, have you ever been hired by the the companies particular, or are you just going there and you just taking pictures? Man, it's it's the best way of saying this. I guess when it all started, it was supposed to be a tax break, right? That's how you do it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> and I'm like, a company. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, justify to the wife. Yeah, I got to buy all this stuff. It's <laughs> that's how you do it. It's necessary. <laughs> Absolutely necessary. Can't go out there with garbage. We need better equipment. <laughs> so we, um, yeah, I guess that's it's really one thing. I went to, actually went to school photography. Mm-hmm. Um, Where'd you go to school? I went to U of M. Okay. And I remember. See, now, we're, now you're about ready. We're about ready to go on a little trip here. Let's go. And when it's done, we're going to get back into there. <laughs> That's a payment, right, for sharing. Yeah. So, I I don't know. I guess I never really had any ambition. Um, I was kind of the kid that whenever I want to do something, I could just do it. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that makes you spoiled, right? So, you kind of just assume, like, hey, everything's going to pan out for me. I don't have to worry about it. Um, I slept in class, and... The teacher would wake me up. I'd stare at the board, piece together really quickly what they were trying to figure out, and then solve the problem. Oh. Half the teachers told me to shut up and put my head back down, (laughs) and the other half just got mad at me. Yeah. So I remember I got pulled out of my math class once, and my teacher is just rallying me. (laughs) She is mad at me. She's like, you are smart. And I'm just like, I don't feel smart. I'm just <laughs> I'm just sitting here trying to hit on a girl. What do you want out of me, bro? Yeah. And she is just going to town on me. And she's like, you can do anything you want. What do you want to do? Now, I'm like 16 or 17 years old at this point. No one has ever asked me what it is I want to do. Mm. Right? I was always told that you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do this. And I didn't really question it because I just assumed that that's what life was. Yeah. And I paused for a minute. I was like, oh, I can do anything I want. 
I can do anything I want. Oh my God. Like I, how did I never think of this? Like, it was just like a brand new revelation. I got a big old smile on my face. And I got all excited. And I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah, man. I want, I want to be my dad. Oh. And she's like, great, perfect, perfect, perfect. What does your dad do? Oh man, he, um, man, he works. 12 hour shifts, five days a week at a job he hates. <laughs> he goes home to a nagging wife and ungrateful kids. Oh, on the sixth day, he cleans the house until he goes to bed. And on the seventh day, he barbecues, drinks beer, and uh, <laughs> watches some football. And then he does it all over again. And I'm all happy and excited about this life. I'm like, this sounds great. Yeah. This, is, this sounds amazing to me. <laughs> and she just has this blank look on her face and sends me back. Oh. She calls up my dad. You know, and my dad's like, oh, what do you do now? And she tells him the whole story. He's like, that's my boy. <laughs> Calls up his mom. My son wants to be like me. You know, he's all proud and happy and everything. But um, I don't know. I guess that was the first time I realized I could do anything. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't want a desk job. Mm. I never wanted to be shackled down or anything like that. I've always had authority problems. I'm just I'm a horrible person that way. I don't like to listen. Rebel by nature. Uh, I'm, it's in the blood. Yeah. It's, look, me and my kids. It's in the blood. <laughs> right? So, um I decided I just didn't wasn't going to go to college. Mm-hmm. I just didn't want it. I had no interest. I had no thought. I had no want. There's nothing in there that was going to make me go. I was going to go out and get a job. I didn't care if I was digging ditches. Man, I just don't want to be in an office. Yeah. That's the last thing I ever wanted. I've been in a desk for years. <laughs> you know, what if yeah. I want to go back into that scenario? And I bumped into a photographer teacher. And... I don't know what it's about this lady, man. She was awesome. I took her two years in a row because I loved her class so much. And I guess it was just, um, it was the first time I'd seen romance or not romance, but like in a sense of like um, a love interest, but romance in a sense of like a love for something, like a mm-hmm. wine for something magic, right? It's gone in the world. Magic's gone. Yeah. People keep trying to kill it every day with science and everything else. Something to be said about magic. Yeah. And she had a passion for photography. And it was funny because she still was a little scientific and that's kind of the way I think sometimes right you know I break everything down into this this that and that and you know there's rules and there's things you kind of have to abide by but you can still have a little bit of creativity in those moments because I still you know just the way I personally think and I loved it because she was sort of one of these things where she'd go on this huge like long talk about how for, uh, portrait photography needs to be this way it needs to look like this and needs to look like that and then someone took a picture of a car and she just like rips it up and this is back in film, bro. <laughs> you know, oh this, my God. Like, this is back in film. She just like rips it up. So like, it only needs to be one picture of a car. It needs to look just like this. And you put it up to sell it. And that is it. And I'm like, Jesus, man, that is hardcore, dude. I love it. But in her head, you know, she had this, this she had the perfect idea of what yeah. she wanted. She had a vision. And yeah. Right. And like, you got to think about it. You have a vision when you have something you love. Right. You, you know, say rap, right. Mm hmm. You have a vision. You got to put that music out there, right? It's your yeah. thought. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks is good. Yeah. It matters what you think. And that's the same thing as her, right? And, and I saw that and it was like, I guess it's the first time I've seen anybody so hardcore about it, you know, mm-hmm. so so much about it. I was like, I want that in my life. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm just kind of like, whatever. I'm a tumbleweed, bro. Like, I love this. <laughs> I love what I'm seeing. And um, so I started doing photography and it was a good way to meet, you know, I mean, like I said, I got in trouble for like you know talking to the ladies. Yeah, yeah. It was terrible, man. I'm, I'm sitting there, I'd walk up out of camera, walk up to a young lady. I'm like, hey, you want to go take some pictures? Oh, I'd love to. Like, you know, you're out <laughs> in the woods and you're having a good time. Sorry about that, Mike. Oh, yeah. And um, you know, you go out and you and you have fun. It's it was good icebreaker and an opener and stuff, right? And um, always guaranteed that second date because it was film. Yeah. You had to go back and meet up again, right? Worked out. Always I worked out great, man. Good facts. And. Um, <laughs> Ain't that way no more, right? Now it's like, oh, you, you can send it to me. It's yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I messed that first one up. <laughs> so it's um that that's how I got into it actually, and um that's um I don't know how we got to see you. I said you can't you can't just have me talk, dude. I'll just ramble oh, on. Fine. <laughs> I'll ramble on about anything. I don't even know how we got on this, but anyways, that's how um I got into photography. Yeah. And then I went to the U of M. Didn't want to go to school or nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's why I went to the U of M. And uh, that was the only way I went. I couldn't stand it. I didn't like none of my peers. Really? And come to find out, none of them even went into photography anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I ended up uh, going into IT, which, you know, pays the bills. Yeah, yeah. Not mad, right? Very, yeah. very happy. You know, the wife doesn't have to work or anything like that. So very blessed in that fashion. Yeah. But at the same point, it's really one of those things of, man, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, it would have been a different world. It would have yeah. been a completely different life. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's kind of nice to be able to get go out there and get that creativity 
snap those pictures and I would just absolutely love where I was even going with this one. <laughs> roll it back roll back the tape <laughs> that's all good so when you do photography uh is there like a certain type you like to do like i've seen a lot of yours it's like you know not portraits but they're a people is it is that something that you're more into is like just taking pic- pictures of people or is there you know you have a preference so actually you know what let's do this <laughs> we'll talk about this. I just, I just remember that part. That you owe me one of these guys. Now the the thing that I did a lot of, we just touched on, was I did a lot of portraiture. Yeah. Of pretty young ladies. Yeah. Because I had a problem, you know, and I guess it's just something I kind of enjoyed, and I, I did for the most part. I mean, as stern as she was about the photography. Um, you know, certain things only, you know, like she was big on my our photography teacher, my first one. She was very big on like portraiture. She was big on kind of very artsy things, mm-hmm. you know, sort of high contrast stuff. It's a lot of black and white. So obviously it's going to be a lot of high contrast stuff. Yeah. But um, she was very big on artsy stuff, a little bit of portraiture, um, occasional landscape, not really so much still life. And I guess I kind of related to that. So whenever I went and did my own thing with film, it was pretty much portraitures only. Mm-hmm. When I got into digital photography, and I kind of gave him that ability not to constantly um, spend time, because doing film took forever. Yeah. And unless you really want to take photos of it, you just didn't. Mm-hmm. Digital comes along, <laughs> whatever, right? It's, just, it's a delete button. So I, I've explored different types of photography. I've looked at all. I kind of have to whenever you go to school for it. And I just, I guess it's people more than anything, right? I, I do enjoy people. That's why I do. I focus on portraitures and music. I, it's pretty funny how I fell into music, but it's really, those are the two main things that I focus on the most. Okay. And it's really one of those things of people change. People are dynamic. Mm-hmm. I set this here, that stays there till a person moves it. Yeah. Or, you know, obviously, act of God can yeah. step in, but you get the idea. Um, same thing. Inanimate objects stay. The landscape takes a while for it to change. Um, there's not a lot of that volatility in it. When you look at a picture of a person from one second to the next, it can be a completely different emotion. It can be a completely different person. Your perception of it, of how you feel for that day, can definitely read into it your past experiences and everything like that. It's it's interesting that you can get a photo of somebody and depending who the person is, that whole perception can change. Mm-hmm. Um, the person looking at it, their perception can change of themselves. You know, there, there's, there's so much that can be brought in with a person as opposed to any other subject matter. There, there's so much more depth that can be there. There's more time that's spent in your head personally analyzing it mm-hmm. than anything else you look at. And that's just me. I just feel that that's there's just so much there, more there. There's yeah. more depth in there. You're more curious about people. Um, things are cool. Cars are cool. Um, you know, mountains are cool. Rivers are cool. But at the same point, you take a thousand pictures of the same river, and you have a thousand pictures of the same river. Yeah. You take a thousand pictures of a person, and you have a thousand moments in someone's life. Mm. And each of those are different. Each of those are special. Each of those unique. Yeah. And to me, that's why I, I focus on those things because they seem to have so much more value. They have so much more um, power in them. But again, what do I know? <laughs> right? You know, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just a guy. Cheers to that. There it is. Yeah, I definitely know what you're talking about with that because it's like um, it's same thing like relating to music. Like you could just make you could just make a song and then just like make it but that's kind of like the landscape like if you want to just put together a song you can but you can also bring that song to life by putting your real emotion like if somebody if somebody um but you can kind of tell when somebody's doing something out of their realm like something out of the ordinary like always think about Lil Wayne he made that album uh Rebirth and it was like a rock album it was something that he's not used to doing and people weren't used to hearing 
a rapper do a rock album right and then it was out of his out of his realm of ordinary and then when he when he did it a lot of people hated it but it was something that he he just felt was different he felt like it was something that he wanted to do and he just wanted right. to get out there and that was his i guess that was his taking a picture of a landscape like he just he it was something that was just i don't know it was something that was I guess just just putting it out there to see to see what he could take take a picture of, you know what I mean? Like what what he could capture. And then his regular rap is like his portraits cuz you're getting the true him. You're getting every single song he puts out as a real moment of his life. And I don't know, that's that's my <laughs> that's my relation of analogy, but I think that when you're making music, you can definitely tell a difference when somebody is like, that's really them. Or if it's like, cause in music, a lot of people, they get their songs like top mainstream industry people. They get their songs written for them. Not every song, but like produced. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A, a yeah. good bit of the songs, they can be like, they'll be written for them. And all they got to do is like sing it or rap it or perform it. And, and the ones that they actually wrote themselves, you can, you can tell the difference. Like if you really listen to that specific artist, you can tell the difference. And I don't know. That's that's just my way of relating those two those two subjects. Well, I was looking at the um, was I'm thinking about it, and this is how you know that I'm putting thought into what I'm about to say. Um, <laughs> the notes. hair. This, this, this is beautiful <laughs> hair, by the way. If you've never touched this, like <laughs> you've done yourself a service. Now, it's really one of the things. I think you were you were coming from the idea of somebody listening to it, right? And mm-hmm. that was a landscape versus a portrait. And in my head, a photographer takes a picture of a landscape and a person. That's still them, their art, mm-hmm. their way of doing stuff. And it's, it's all of it. It's whether they choose to edit it or not edit it. That is part of their art. Um, the kind of edit they do is part of their art as well. It's part of that expression. So, Little Wayne would be the photographer who, let's say his whole life he's done portraits and now he wants to do landscape. And then everybody's like, bro, I subscribe to you to look at pretty women yeah. and now you're showing me a rock. <laughs> yeah. What is wrong with you? Yeah. Like, let's get, let's get back to what we care about. Yeah. So, I, I can understand that and I can see that. Branding is, a, branding is big. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think it's... Um, I think there's it's, it's a fair argument. I think it's a fair thing to go after him about, right? And the reason being, like, if you look at my Instagram feed, when it very first started, and I keep it under 90, I always keep it, try to keep it under 90. Oh, okay. So I I'll, I'll delete that. a bunch of old posts. Okay. And it's really one of the things of, when I first started it, it was all these different things just as I was taking pictures. And as more time went on and I realized where I was really getting traction, um, and more people wanted to really see it, the most, you know, everything else, the people actually calling me to come do something. Everything I post up even, those are just um, either free jobs or discounted jobs. Okay. I'll never put like a full paid one up. I just, mm-hmm. I don't feel right doing it. Okay. And it's one of those things to me of, I made it a point to just be women and music. Mm-hmm. And I mean, guys too, right? But it's, it's, it's mostly, I mean, it sounds weird. There's a lot of male models yeah, yeah. that would love to have their photo taken, but it's always an odd conversation hitting a guy up out of nowhere. Yeah. Hey, man, I'd like to take a picture. You know, I, I've it, done it, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done that yeah, before, that's... and it didn't, like, I mean, we never met up. He, he actually said he, like, canceled because he had he had something to do. But right. It's, yeah, it's a little different. It's, it's, it feels weird, and, uh, you know, maybe it's just a mental thing. Who yeah. knows? And it could be. But it is one of those things of, and it's it's terrible because the truth is, um, a male model still needs as much you know work as a female model. Correct. And even though I know they don't even get the amount of traction or clicks, um, you know, it's still in my head. It's still people, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm happily married guy. Yeah. You know, it's no longer like a twenty year old guy just trying to hit on chicks. Like yeah. it's it's something I just like doing. So, but it is one of those things of. It's just for me, and it's a brandy thing. It's um, models, or you know, even family portraitures, but you know, they're good-looking people, mm-hmm. and music, yeah. right? And it's it's live shows and stuff like that. They get thrown up. 
And that's sort of keeping that branding together. So yeah. anybody who does get on it, they're pretty much going to know that they're going to get a, um, a good looking person in a portrait or they're going to get some kind of live concert. Mm-hmm. They're going to get one of those two things. Um, the edits can change, right? The edits sort of my how I feel at the moment yeah. is going to be displayed on the photo itself. And that's what's going to be the variable that will change it up as you go, including subject matter. But the consistency is there. Yeah. And it's a branding thing. So Lil Wayne brands himself as a rapper. He go out there and he's rapping. Right? You open up a box of Cheerios and out comes Lucky Charms, you're going to be a little upset, right? <laughs> so, it's really one of those things, right? These guys, everybody subscribed for one thing. They got something else. It's it's understandable that they should get upset, but at the same point, um, you know, my argument is, you know, you, you vote with your money. Yeah. You know, if you, if you don't like what he put out, you don't buy it. Yeah. You know, and at that point, as an artist, he has to decide, is expressing himself more important than the money? Mm. And whenever you get that big, you know, you make a choice, right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of how that works. I saw that you had that um, that one photo of the chick. She was in the water, like oh, not in the water, but next to the water, and she has like the flame in her hand. Yeah, that was that was really cool. Did, was that like an idea that you had put together, or she had had? Like, and do you just like relate that? I mean, uh, do you just like communicate that with her and like, hey, do this and just just. <laughs> Just listen to me. I got this. <laughs> so that is um, that's Angel of Azeroth. Um, cool kid. She's really awesome. I like her a lot. We were we we're talking about doing another shoot before all this madness popped up. So yeah, now yeah. we're just kind of waiting. But um, she's really awesome. She is a Twitch streamer. So I'm gonna bug you about putting her link if you don't mind. Oh uh, yeah, sure. In the bottom of this, um, you want to go check her out. She's pretty awesome. But um, I actually got. I actually got those photos uh, published. It's oh, really? Cool. It's in a cosplay magazine somewhere. Oh, wow. I'm re- I'm re- I, I do this a lot. Like, I put out images and they'll get published, and like I never, I never post them up anywhere. Like I never like, hey, look what happened, guys. So you just put them on Instagram, and then that's it. Yeah, pretty. I'm pretty bad. <laughs> I'm pretty bad. <laughs> well, I guess I guess it's really one of those things of like, I'm, I, I I am so um, narcissistic, so conceited, so full of myself in general that I've gotten to the point that I like to think in this level of narcissism that I don't even feel the need to tell everybody. I'm like, oh, y'all should just understood that I'm already published, so I don't even worry about it. You know what I mean? It's- I know exactly what you... Because, like, with my music, I've been terrible about advertisement. Like, yeah. I, like, I don't think that I have the best music, but, like, I put myself in the realm of, like, the best rappers, and I don't tell people about my music. Like, I just post it, and then just hope that people are word of mouth spreading it and I don't do any kind of ads or anything. I've recently started doing it. I'm like, Oh yeah, somebody in Nevada doesn't know who I am. So I should probably advertise Give a heads up. so people know about my music. But yeah, I know what you mean. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think I necessarily even, I'm not even worried about that. Yeah. You know, like I know, like even on Instagram feed, I, I keep them like three by three by three, kind yeah. of trying to do three series. I like your setup. That's and there's nice. some, um, it, there, there's some times on that third one. I'm like, oh man, guys, I forgot to put up a third one. So <laughs> here's the third one. No hashtags or nothing. Have fun. Yeah, <laughs> on yeah. to the next series. I've already, you know what I mean. I've already mentally moved on. Mm-hmm. And it's just one of those things of like, I don't know. I guess I don't necessarily. Doctor Phil says you got to love yourself first, right? Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is once you start loving yourself, and nobody else can take that away from you, they don't care. If it, they don't care what anybody thinks. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, I'm not really worried about like you know um, likes or you know followers or anything like that. I'm not worried about advertising or you know getting my name out there. I know like even if you look at my website, there's no pricing up. Mm. I, I I don't even know if there's a contact up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's really bad, and it, and it's one of those things of like it's a it's a business, sure, right? Mm. It's really one of the things. But the funny thing is, it's really the way I really make money is I've gone out and done something for free. Mm-hmm. Someone got it. They liked it, and then they call me up. And they're like, "Hey, can I give you money to come do this?" And I'm like, wow. "Yeah, absolutely." You know, and you know, we work stuff out like that all the time. And I can't. There's never been again, probably because I don't have a contact me, <laughs> right? Um, I've never really had a scenario where somebody kind of just cold calls. Mm-hmm. And I appreciate that. I like the idea that these people I've already worked with and done stuff with, you know, want to hit me up for something else, and they want me to do more, and they want me to do these other things, and it's really cool. I've got to do some pretty cool stuff, but. It is one of those things of, I don't necessarily, I get that I need to, I get that I want to grow it, I have to do that, but at the same point, I got like three small kids, right, 
um, like seven and under. Mm -hmm. um, I got a full time job. I love the photos. I love doing this. I absolutely do. Um, you know, I always give everybody a very friendly rate for the fact that in my head, I would rather them take, I'd rather them have more pictures, right? Than, you know, have them pay the market rate. Because again, like, you know, I, like if I was doing this full time, there's no way, mm. right? For what I charge, there's no way. There's absolutely no way you could sustain on that. That's the reason photographers charge so much. Yeah. Right? So the average photographer who goes out there and works, they're charging so much because work is slim. Yeah. So they need enough to get by. Correct. Yeah. Now, if you are one of the photographers who are busy, which because those do exist, they love the fact that everybody's charging so much because they can charge that much mm -hmm. because it's the market rate. And then they can constantly work and constantly do it. And they make a lot of money that way. Yeah. Um, that's a small fraction. Most people are you know, probably making like, what, 20, 30,000 a year doing it. Yeah. And that's full time, nonstop grinding, advertising, doing everything they can. Which is sad. Yeah. And it's just, it's a labor of love. Yeah. Right. And, um, it's just, it's just one of those things for me where, you know, I'm like, Hey, I'm just, I'm happy to go. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm like, I'm good. My bills are paid. Everything's covered. All this is fun. All it got to do is fund itself, mm -hmm. you know? So I got to get new toys and I got to get new stuff. And if something cancels, that's fine. It cancels. And you know, it's not the end of the world for me, which is why I'm not really, compelled myself to really advertise or throw myself out there and say, hey, look at my photos and everybody like me and praise me. I just I just like taking photos. And you know, people are like, hey, I like it. And I'm like, I can't stand it. <laughs> I do not, man, look at this. And like, and I'm pit parking everything. I'm like zooming into 600%. I'm like, you see this one pixel here? <laughs> you see this? I, I cannot stop staring at that, dude. It is, I swear, it could be like a little icon on the desktop. I'm like, no, let me blow this up for you. Let, yeah. me, let me show you exactly what this is. It's driving me insane. Like that's, that's the level of ridiculous that it is, but. Yeah. Yeah, so same boat as you, man. I'm bad at advertising. <laughs> you know, like the, I get the concepts behind it, right? I get the whole idea. You need to, yeah. you need to build stuff. You need to hit it there. Um, branding is everything, right? Putting stuff up, like you know, if I'm a smart man. You know, I got a little press pause thing. I got a little thing where sitting right here. This is press pause on a little website right there, yeah. Instagram. Whole time, so everybody's looking at it, right? No. Do you have stickers? No. So Luis, I got Luis. I saw you had pictures of Anna and Elizabeth. She, I, I yeah. had her on the podcast. I got some of her too. Yeah, Luis and uh, Lucky Seven Brass Band. They they both came by and like gave me. Actually, I got this sticker from their concert. I went to one of their concerts and um, got his sticker. But um, Luis brought that sticker with her, and I was like. It's a good brand. Stickers, huh? <laughs> I had no idea that was a big thing. And then I found out that a lot of people use stickers and they like they just tag. Like they pretty much just throw stickers up everywhere, like around their city, so like people can always see it. And they're like, ah, oh, what is a sticker? And then you go somewhere, it's like, ah, the sticker again. So it's just, you know, it's a it's a brand. It has a it has a bigger effect than that. There's a um, there's a there's a guy named Derek Brown, he's a mentalist. He has a pretty cool um, segment on one of his shows. Now, you can argue it's stage or whatever, but it's based on real science. Mm -hmm. He hired these advertising guys to come do stuff for him. And he took them along a very specific route from their hotel to where they're going to meet him and talk about it to where they had to create his advertisement. Okay. Along the way, in New York, they had like... A bear holding balloons and all this other weird, all these kind of weird things that as they're driving by, they're not really looking at because it's just New York. But subconsciously, they're seeing it and it's repeated. All these things are kind of repeated different ways of different fashions all the way up there, all along this route. So whenever they're supposed to do an advertisement pitch, they draw something up. The mentalist draws up his and then they match compare and somehow they've come up with this nearly the same thing. But the thing is, they're just getting hit with all these images. Yeah. Right? And they didn't realize, but subliminally, they're just getting hit. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's smart. You put that everywhere and anything. And even if you don't necessarily even realize that you're seeing it, you get a sense of familiarity with it. Yeah. So this way, whenever you are confronted with it, you're like, man, I feel like I've noticed. Yeah. Where yeah. do I know? Yeah. yeah. You know, because it's, 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 it's embedded psychologically in your head yeah and that's the reason why advertisements everywhere even like who pays for a billboard anymore like I don't, I don't look at a billboard right but at the yeah. end of the day the truth is you do yeah whether you like it or not you you literally look at it it gets locked away mm -hmm. and all it takes is some kind of trigger to bring it back yeah there's um 
I saw a coronavirus billboard. It's um, close to the IKEA here in Cordova, and then um, there's I know the I think the Red Hook that restaurant. Yeah, it's got a billboard. Um, who else has a billboard? The two strip clubs here, uh, Gold Club and Purple Diamond. I think they both have billboards, but. Like, those are, like, the constant ones. And I'm like, what do y'all... Oh, McDonald's has one. And I, to me, I, it blows my mind that McDonald's even has advertisement. Like, what are you advertising? Everybody knows who you are. That's <laughs> out. But, but, I mean, I guess they still think it's necessary, which I think is, is crazy. Like, they probably spend at least $100 million on advertisement a year. At right. least. And... They're, for them to be as big as they are, that's that's still crazy to me. Every time you see that M, though. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know, know exactly what, I mean? what it is. Uh, someone just draws it. Even if there's just like an M with that big loop. Yeah. Anybody draws it. Even spelling their name. At first, like, is that McDonald? Oh, no. It just says Mike. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. No, I mean, but, I mean, yeah. You already know what you. it is. I mean, that, no, that's a real thing. That's like, a, there's a huge science behind it, man. Yeah. Like, you just want to hit somebody so hard. That's the reason, um, like, even even your hat. Yeah. Right? has image on it and just it's hitting you with it just yeah. boom 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 non-stop and you kind of you, one um, brand recognition is a huge thing mm-hmm. just being able to know your brand see your brand making a image that is simple quick to understand doesn't take a lot of mental process so this way it really sticks in your hold the M the golden arches right you know the ideas and stuff like this you see um, who was it who went through the big change I forgot who it was there's somebody who had this really complicated one and it got I think it was Burger King Mm. Right, and then they went through like three or four changes to what it is now, where it's real simple, like that BK, like that boom. Right? Do you remember the IHOP one? Yeah. When they they were trying to make it IHOP, was it IHOB? No, it was the, the, the burger, the burger stunt. I, I was like, what are y'all doing? And then they changed it back. And we're like, oh, we were just joking. And I was like, were you <laughs> <laughs> really? Like, were you joking? But that was weird. Like IHOP, just stick to what you're good at. It's right. pancakes. Yeah. I, I thought that was that's, that's a little way all over again. To me. <laughs> right? You go for pancakes, serve your burger. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Flip the table, man. Just <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had one of the burgers? It's not good. Is it really? No, it's not I, good. I've, I've never had one. I, like I'm pretty sure every time I've been to IHOP, I either get an omelet or a pancake, and it's I'm not a pancake, but <laughs> multiple pancakes. But they're I mean that's that's what they're good at. And for me, that's like when. Was it McDonald's had like spaghetti, and then they had uh, what is McDonald's that? had all kinds of stuff. They've had some crazy. I they think they've aggressive. had tacos at a point. Would surprise me. They, they've had all sorts of. Look, stuff. if you keep buying it, I promise you, they're going to sell it. it. Taco Bell has. Um, do they still serve those French fries? I don't think they serve the fries anymore. I think they stopped. Oh my god! I was That's like, what do y'all do? <laughs> It's it's crazy what companies do to just like I guess change up you know how they're making money you know how they're how they're I guess they're not changing their brand right but they're trying to expand their brand though well I guess it's uh it's one of those things of so I worked for a company and it sold a certain product and they said look this is the market share the market share has not changed in X long we can keep doing this. Or we can get into this other business and hopefully start gaining market share there. Mm-hmm. So we're still going to focus on what we're doing, but the main focus was no longer just trying to be more aggressive in that market space because it had solidified. And mm-hmm. that happens, right? I mean, let's be fair. Like, nobody's toppling McDonald's. Like, the yeah. biggest game changer has been Chick-fil-A, and it's not even technically a burger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know that's that's just kind of mess. That's kind of you know alter the uh, the fast food chain a little bit. Yeah. But at the same point, McDonald's still holding tough. They still have their market share. They, they, you know, they've taken all kinds of flack over the years, and they're still you know tough about it. Yeah. Now, in order to diversify, though, and that's the thing, sort of change up that portfolio. They got burgers. We got burgers all day, baby. You need burgers. That's us. But yeah. you know, they're like, well, we got to do something else though. Yeah. If we want to make profit, we want to get bigger. Right, we want to crush the competition. It's like Arnold, right? You know, see them all <laughs> laid out before you. Lamentation of the other companies, right? Um, one of those things that I guess they have to diversify. So you have to you have to bring in the tacos, right? You got yeah. you got to start serving that salad. They brought in coffee. Thing is oh, killing. Yeah. yeah, right. It just they were just like, look, man, you want a cup of coffee? It's like a gas station. You get one, and that is it. You want sugar? No sugar. Yeah. And all of a sudden now they got you know all those uh, mochas <laughs> and. 
Fra- uh, what do they do there? Frappuccinos. Yeah, they've got right? those. They, they yeah. got all they got all that stuff there, and that hasn't gone anywhere. Yeah. Everyone's like, this ain't gonna last. And then they throw a Mac in front of everything, like Mac oh, yeah. Frappe or whatever they what? call them. Like Frappe <laughs> again? It's a sticker. Yeah, it's a sticker. You gotta put right on the name. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, uh, whoever is in who's doing their marketing is doing a good job. Um, it's I don't know. It's whatever whatever people are going to buy is just they're narrowed in on. It. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're definitely narrowed in on. Have you seen the, um, oh, man, that's going to bother me if I forget this. What is it called? Uh, McDonald's, you know, the, McNop- the Monopoly game. Yeah. So there's a documentary on Netflix called, is it either Netflix or it's HBO? Is it the one where they rigged it? Yeah. Yeah, but... You remember the name of it? That's, every, that's everywhere, man. I don't... I mean, <laughs> everything's rigged, bud. Oh, man. So, did, did you... I mean, you, like, heard about it? You, oh, the yeah. The whole story? That was incredible. So, if you haven't heard the whole story, for everybody listening, um, so, there's a documentary on it. About, <laughs> I got you. About Carry on. Um, the whole Monopoly story and how it was the... It was rigged. Because there was a guy that worked for a company. Monopoly hired, I think, two different companies. One company made the pieces, and another company was supposed to like set up the game or something. I forgot what it was. But basically, a guy was going to the bathroom and taking the pieces, and like he had to open up an envelope to exchange the pieces out and then he was putting other pieces in there to make sure the count was the same and then he was selling the winning tickets he was selling them to people for like i think it depended on what it was so like you know you could win a million dollars or you could win like five hundred thousand or stuff like that he was selling those tickets to people and that i was like oh my god (laughs) but yeah the monopoly the Monopoly thing, that was, that's, that was pretty creative. Whoever's idea that was, like, hey, let's take a regular child's game and get people to come in, and they're literally just buying our food, but they have a chance to win stuff. Wow, who and, doesn't love to gamble? Yeah, exactly. And gambling with just buying food? Like, yeah, like hey. That's a perfect mixture. Look, you got, you got fast food and gambling. <laughs> if McDonald's sold beer, dude, I would never leave. No, I yeah. <laughs> Why would you go anywhere? Yeah, Come on, exactly. man. You have it all in one. Exactly. There we go. There you go. Cheers. Here you go. Every order of uh, large fries. <laughs> one shot. By the way, um, I don't think we actually mentioned because Cinco de Mayo is coming up. That's why. You That's one. right. <laughs> and, every, so, and on post, right? Every time you take a shot, the box playing, right? <laughs> so, I... Um, are you like a big celebrator? Do you do just like a family thing or? This is where we get all sad. All right, here we go. No, <laughs> no that's cool. So Wait, wherever you want to go with it. My, um, again, because I was a party kid. Yeah. I didn't really care too much for like uh, Christmas or Thanksgiving. There's always obligations, mm-hmm. right? You're always end up someplace. You don't want to be a little longer than you want to. Because, you know, all kinds of stuff. Like family, you know, there's a fight maybe. There's an area. I don't know. Right? And don't get me wrong. Sometimes they're great and they're awesome. At the same point, you're just like, I'm ready to go home. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I get it. It's been fun. I got to go. And, you know, other ones are kind of uneventful and stuff. And it's just not very fun. And there's all the things you got to do, like, New Year's Eve. Yeah, it's cool. It's a big party. But, like, that's the point. It has to be a party every time, mm-hmm. you know? And it, it's going to be at midnight. You better be there at midnight, son. <laughs> right? Don't mess around. Like, this is, you got to be in a spot. And, it, you know, again, it's too much. And I, I guess the reason I really, um, I always like Cinco de Mayo. And I, Cinco de Mayo was like my favorite holiday, was there's no expectations. Mm-hmm. Right, Fourth of July, man, you gotta be super patriotic, bud. Yeah, yeah. You, man, you you low down on some flags, right? You gotta have the fireworks, right? Barbecue going, just madness, right? Yeah. You know, live it up. Sing it a mile. Like you just go out and get Mexican food and tequila. Like, it, yeah. you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> That's the expectation. It, like, the it's expectation. Awesome. It's a free party. Yeah, yeah. Right. Nobody really cares. No one's really worried about it. There's there's no Super Bowl on for you to pay attention to. No, it's nothing's going on yeah nothing's important right now it's near the end of like there's some kind of school or you know some kind of uh, college something going on it's near the end of it anyways who cares have a blast right mm-hmm. whole thing is just a a raging living party and then um 
so for me, it was always one of those things of like, oh, I, I loved it, man. Because, you know, being a brown man, everybody's just like, you know, all crazy and excited during the day and everybody got some braros on and I'm like, <laughs> I don't even wear them, but I'm about today. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I look good at it anyways. Let's start it up. Yeah, man. It's just, it's a blast. But I remember actually um, my father died mm. and I buried him on Cinco de Mayo. Oh, wow. And I'm really? sitting there going like, man. That really puts a damper on the day. Yeah. So it was the first thing in the mile since, you know, all the craziness and fun and all this stuff. And this, you know, happened in my 20s, whenever that happened. So kind of put a damper on the whole holiday. Mm -hmm. And then um, as we go into the next year, you know, I didn't even go out. Mm -hmm. It was the first it was the first thing in the mile uh, since all the fun and all the craziness and all the stuff that I was like, you know what? Yeah, we're gonna skip it. Mm -hmm. You know, we're just we're just not gonna go out and everything like that. And uh, I sat out on my uh, little tiny apartment patio, you know, and just had a beer. And uh, he a didn't. Corona? Yeah, it was a Corona, <laughs> of all things, to help them out. And um, I had one for him, even though he didn't drink. Mm -hmm. So I had one for him out there. Yeah, you know, just like we spent time with the air. Yeah. But, um, and not like we had a very great relationship anyways, mm -hmm. you know, so there was that. Yeah. But, I don't know, it's still interesting. It's still fun. And I guess the next year following that, you know, it, you know, it kind of picks back up, but I guess there's still sort of that soreness in it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's still, it's still one of those especially now I've gotten older. Um, and there's a lot of times in life that I think about the guy where I didn't understand him because I was so young. And now there's a lot of questions I feel I would love to ask him, but I can't because he's not there. Yeah. Right? And I, and I still have my stepfather who did a lot of the raising. So, you know, not take anything away from him. But it is one of those things of, there's a lot to be said about genetics. Mm -hmm. And I remember this one time, golly, I had to be four or five. I am running through this guy's house just a holy terror it is early in the morning so slowly peeking up and just me my older brother and um his girlfriend's two kids mm -hmm. are just streaking through this little apartment screaming and yelling just <laughs> jumping on things like oh man i'm just like man, i'm a terrible kid dude it's just bad i'm just going and I'm trying to get away, and I run smack dead into a glass window, like the little sliding doors. Oh, just snap. like, bam! And it just like rings my head, and I drop backwards, and I fall down, and thankfully I didn't go through it, right? And I'm just like, oh, all days and everything, and I stand up. Dude didn't even move. My dad's just sitting there eating a bowl of cereal at a fold-up <laughs> card table, just like, <laughs> dude just zoned. I'm like, dude, I just slammed into this thing, man. You're like, you're not even concerned? Like, you didn't oh, even look at it? He's man. not, he's, he's, he's a million years away. You know, he's nowhere, he's not there. That's His body's there. Guy's eating cereal. And I'm just like, well, whatever, I'm not in trouble. Yeah, yeah. And I carry on. And as I got older, I was sitting down and I remember I was having a cup of coffee at my table. And uh, this is back when I only had like, like one kid. Mm hmm. And I'm just, I'm thinking about everything. And I, like, my head's in a certain spot, you know, and I'm just thinking. And, you know, I do a lot. I do too much thinking, I guess. But I'm just going and going and going. And I'm just like, I understand. I get it. I get where this man was. I get I get in his head what was going on. Like, the guy was understanding everything. You know what I mean? He was self-reflecting. He was, he was reflecting on what was going on. And I assume, I don't know, can't ask the guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it's really one of those things of, like, I would love to have that conversation with him. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, where, where, how did you go from there? Like, what was that stepping stone? Now, obviously, I sorted that out myself, mm -hmm. right? I got through I got through that part without him being there, but it was sort of that looking back to that moment, understanding that moment, right? Yeah. And getting like, I get it. You know what I mean? I get it, man. I promise you, I get it. You know, and it, it clicked. You know, and it and it helped me get through that, right? Because yeah. it let me know that. You know that there's, you know, you're not the only one who ever feels anything ever. Mm -hmm. But that means a lot when somebody that close had, and even though he didn't have a chance to say anything or offer me again kind of advice, I already knew just from, you know, our life together where it went. Yeah. And I could, you know, go from there. Now, we went different courses, thank God. But, <laughs> but you know, it's one of those things. I knew he was there. I knew that mindset. I knew that mentality. And it was pretty awesome, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I would just would have loved to have that conversation. And there's a million other times. And, like, I think now that I'm at the point where, you know, 
Uh, we had our falling out and everything like that. Yeah. So there's not a lot to relate to mm-hmm. from here to the point of his death. Um, it's so interesting to look back and reflect on, and I'm ready for my children to rebel against me. <laughs> you know, because, yeah, it's about that time. <laughs> well, he, put, he put down rebellions pretty fast, so yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited about getting a boy in a chokehold. <laughs> not today, son. One day you'll overtake me. Not today. Do you have all boys or girls or what's? Uh, I got a, um, I got a girl, a boy, and a girl. And um, the the oldest is just the the girliest girl. Yeah, like she she just she has to be queen bee. Ah, uh, um, she is she is all about it. Um, the boy I, I call him Oedipus. Oedipus. He definitely wants to take me out. Ah, uh. <laughs> like it is in his eyes. And I, t- I tell him every day like. You can take out daddy one day. He's like, yeah. I'm like, I'm ready for it, son. Watch. Come on, boy. <laughs> Come on. Make me proud. You know, it's oh, not going to be an easy feat, man. You better start working. So who's the oldest? Uh, the girl. The girl's the oldest. She's the oldest. Oh, okay. You know, so poor guy. Poor guy. Yeah, he gets he gets a lot. He gets a lot of he gets a lot out of it. Like he gets hurt. He starts crying. I'm like, sorry, dude. <laughs> she is. Uh, she's like a year and a half older than you, and <laughs> you're gonna have to be defending her, bud. So you don't have time to cry. You got to yep. start training now, man. Yep. You know. I've got, I've got two older sisters, so yeah. I there you go. Yeah, they're my oldest is she's four years older than me, and then the uh, the next oldest is two years older than me. So yeah. So you really had to work out. Yeah, <laughs> you really like four years in puberty is a long way, bro. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it was yeah, it's a little different having older sisters than compared to like you know you being the the oldest having to protect the little sisters and right. try to stop your friends from hitting on your sister and stuff like that. I had the older sisters. So, so, so you're out there hitting on there. Yeah, right? exactly. Hey, what's up, guys? Exactly. It's like, hey, when's what's her name coming back over? It's there like, you go, yeah. bud. <laughs> it's perfect, right? It's like, oh, you don't, you're not hanging out with her anymore? You go, go to the middle sister, right? And be like, you should be friends with blah, blah, blah now. Exactly. Bring her on over. Yeah. <laughs> what's up, great? So did you, um, did you ever, I don't know, have like a moment when you were in school and you just felt like I don't want to do this anymore like you were talking about having um, just not the best time with school and whatnot. right but you, did you ever just like I don't want to do this anymore well this is this is I don't know man again it goes back to my father he's a pretty aggressive guy um, so my mom and dad split I guess when I was conceived, mm-hmm. I don't know, right? Sort of like a, you know, have a good day, <laughs> right? Kind of situation. And um, so still in my life, mm-hmm. right? Um, he was very focused on his work as opposed to um, a very, very entrepreneurial spirit. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, never really grabbed traction. More more obsessed with starting a business than running a business, if that makes uh, sense. Yeah, yeah. So started a lot of businesses, never really followed them through, which led to a life of a little bit of trouble right and so he, he dips out on that and my mom was very very much a you know you're gonna be a good boy yeah you're gonna be a good boy <laughs> so very much teacher's pet um very very studious like i'm in it to win it you know yeah. i'm gonna have the best grades no one's gonna finish your test first and all mine are gonna be right kind of Kind of go get a mentality, right? Yeah, and go make mama proud. <laughs> you, know, you don't upset mama, and uh, can't go home and upset mom. No, God no. No, she'll come to the school and get you. <laughs> yeah. So That's exactly what you mean. And um, so my older brother got cancer, mm. got leukemia, and uh, he, he won that, and so that brought my dad back into our lives more now we had in all fairness to him he we had moved states mm-hmm. and it's kind of hard to ask a guy to drop everything you're doing yeah. and granted your kids and you can make the argument you should do that yeah. but you know everybody can make their own judgment at that time right and uh, he came up dropped everything like just had to first time he got traction too <laughs> first time he got traction drops it all comes up and um, like works at FedEx and delivering pizzas Oh, okay. right. Like he didn't. He didn't, like funny. Oddly enough, show how much stuff's in the blood. Never wanted to work for anybody else. Like he had a really awesome job, getting paid crazy money working on the railroads mm. when he was younger. And he's like, you know, these hands aren't made for this. And he yeah. quit. And that's when he wanted to make his own business. And um, here's a guy delivering pizzas and working at FedEx, unloading planes. Oh wow! To come, you know, come see. Uh, pretty sure see his son that he thought was dying. Yeah, because yeah. probably should have. You know, he was on some experimental stuff. Yeah. So, 
Um, got through it. Everything was fine. And uh, But the guy shows up out of nowhere, and I ain't seen him in years. Mm. Hey, I'm here to be your dad. I'm like, that's funny. I don't know who you are anymore. Like, yeah. we got to reconnect, bud. And no, we never saw eye to eye. He's just like, all right, son. Well, you seem to be a talking uh, parrot to me. <laughs> you have no individual thought. And I'm like, bro, I'm like 12. What do you want out of me? <laughs> what is individual thought at a 12 year old? Yeah, yeah. And the guy was all about critical thinking, dude. And it was one of those hardcore, like, here's every book on philosophy, psychology, sociology that I could think of, right? All the main mm-hmm. staples. Here's some, you know, go read Sun Tzu's Art of War. Go read Machiavelli's Art of War. And it's yeah. like, who? And it's, <laughs> right? And there's these books that are so far over my head at that age that I didn't understand, but were literally just being beat into me by this guy. Just like, boom, 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 boom. Mm-hmm. And I, had, I kept getting quizzed and torn down. And like, he literally got this guy who's all about going to school, getting straight A's, didn't really think of the world outside of himself, right? I was just mm-hmm. going to school, doing what I'm supposed to do, just being a good boy, right? Whole life is like, I go to school and I make good grades. Yeah, yeah. And this guy's like, son, there's a world. And he's giving me these like college level courses at 12. I wasn't ready for that. Yeah, yeah. And nobody's, you know, grown men are sometimes aren't ready for this, right? True. And he's just hitting me with all these philosophical questions and all these concepts. And I, he started like attacking my mom, right? Saying like, oh, you know, you know, this lady and all this other stuff. And I started trying to defend her, but I couldn't win an argument. Because mm. I didn't know how to debate. Yeah, yeah. So I had to start reading books on debate. I had to start doing all this stuff, doing all that stuff. And it, it, it turned me into a monster like he was. Because in order to, you know, to defeat him, I had to become one myself, right? Mm. Got huge into studying, huge into breaking all this stuff down and, you know, all these other things, learning his tells, right? So in the middle of conversation, when I saw him kind of stagger for me, and I knew, don't let up, right? Get to engage, get back in there, get more aggressive. Yeah. And I'm just a 12 year old kid debating a grown man about you know psychology and philosophy that I know very little concepts about and only what he's telling me and I'm this is like the start of the internet Mm -hmm. the very start of the internet where information is just new getting put out there and I'm consuming everything I can I'm just you know my brother's getting leukemia treatments me and my brother are locked inside an apartment my younger brother are locked inside an apartment for hours and hours by ourselves right you know we're, we're out there in Mallard Pond they're out there like if you were brown, they knocked on your door and shot a shotgun through it. Jesus. I'm serious. Because they knew you had cash on. You didn't have no bank. Yeah. Dang. Right? So we're over there and like, oh, there's another ambulance, boys. Well, <laughs> head in the computer. <laughs> Keep fingers crossed. But, you know, you know that was uh, that was my dad's apartment. That's, you know, that's what he yeah. could afford. That's where he was. And, you know, my um, mom said that we're out working or with my brother. And that's just where we had to be. Right? And if we weren't there, we were in St. Jude. But they got tired of us taking to St. Jude because... You know, you play with the kid, and then the next week he's not there. Yeah. You know, tends to upset some kids. So, I spent a lot of time online, dude, just consuming information and consuming information so I can combat the guy. Yeah. And it turned into one of these really big um, debates and arguments about all these topics. So, you go to school where you're literally... He's, he's gearing you up to be very anti-establishment in the sense of, like authority shouldn't just be given it should be earned mm-hmm. right um just because someone is a judge you don't have to call him your honor yeah right he's just a man like you <laughs> everybody's just a man um respect is earned right and all these other stuff like that um very very huge on rules and not just rules like you should follow them but if there's wiggle room oh you're going to exploit those mm-hmm. right which is why nobody played monopoly me to this day right it's <laughs> it gets, monopoly will get cutthroat with me it gets really bad <laughs> But that's just how life was for me, right? You know. Yeah. So you get this little kid who's studying up on all these topics, and then you're going to throw him in high school where everybody is insecure, concerned about themselves, and worried. Yeah. Oh, man. I was a horrible person. <laughs> I was, well, it was one of those things. Like It was like um, I just wanted to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mama, business. And there's a cute girl. I talked to her. That's just yeah. how things worked. And... Every now and then, man, like somebody would come knocking on my door and I would be none too appreciative. So like, you know, like, let's say I'm sitting here minding my own business and um, someone's like, oh, hey, Um, because, you know, kids are dumb. Kids say dumb things, right? They're like, hey, we just need to get this whole group of people and do something bad to them because we don't like them. Yeah. And I'm like, that's great. What group of people you're part of? Well, I say, let's do it to them. (laughs) And they're like, oh, I'm horribly offended. And everybody's offended. Oh, it's bad when they say they do it. So let's have a talk about this. And I'm... Unfortunately, I'm now skilled in this stuff, and they just started. And yeah. I'm just talking these guys in logical circles, making them feel bad. I'm making everything they say look back on them. Yeah, they got eightfold, right? And they <laughs> want to get a fist fight with me, right? Because, well, unfortunately, my brother's going around just beating everybody up. 
at that time at the school. So they're, even if they thought they could win against me, they weren't going to win against that. <laughs> so it was just, they're just in a bad situation all around. They're like, well, I can't get in a fight with this guy and I can't have a conversation with this guy. He just beat me down. And yeah. so it got to the point near like the last two years, nobody, nobody dared poke the bear. <laughs> you know what I mean? Nobody poked the bear. Nice. Even though my brother was out of the, out of the uh, school by then. Yeah. Like I just kind of hung out and slept and, you know, basically took my time hanging on my buddies and I was a bully of bullies. Like, if I found out somebody was bullying somebody, yeah, yeah. like, I hunted them down. Yeah. And I was like, you know, looking back on it, I was like, no, I was a bully myself. <laughs> I was just smart enough to know who to go after so nobody would judge me. Yeah. Right? No, that's not cool. <laughs> like, that's not cool what I did to some of these people. But, yeah. like, of course, everybody's cheering you on, right? They're all like, ah, you're beating up the bully. You're mad at the bully. You made him cry. And I'm like, you know, you should never make anybody cry. <laughs> that's, you know, now that I'm older and I can reflect on this, somebody should have really had me sat down and talk. We should, a counselor should have found me. You know, we, we, yeah. there should have been a conversation. But it said, like, literally, like, everyone's just cheering me on, encouraging me, teachers and stuff. Like, oh, I don't approve, but good job. And I'm like, no, 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 you should not say that. <laughs> Bad. That was, that was not healthy for me. Because, of course, it just makes the complex grow. But yeah. unfortunately, when you think you're doing everything right, yeah. whenever the teacher tells you you're wrong, and you're like, well, funny thing about the Mesopotamian era, and you start <laughs> dropping all this stuff that your dad made you read, yeah. and you're bringing up books, and you're citing certain people, and you actually bring in the book and show them that they're wrong yesterday just to make that fact, Yeah, you spend a lot of time in the hallway. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in the hallway. Mm. Man, I spent a lot of time in the hallway. <laughs> it was pretty cool, though, man, because here's the thing. Uh, once people figured I was out there, right, the girls would take lunch breaks, mm -hmm. or bathroom breaks, rather, and I'd write them all notes. So I'd have these like little notes, and each one of them had oh, a certain characteristic. So I'd hit them with notes as they're going back and forth, dude. I was like a little printing press. Oh my god! No, I was I was bad. Yeah, I was scheming. I was I was only focused on one thing. Like I learned how to write upside down, so I could turn around to the girls behind me and talk to them. Right. Only reason I looked at Ruby's cube, so I can just show up at a party. Hey, look what I can do! <laughs> oh my god, you had this sound to a science. Uh, yeah, when you have nothing better to do, that's crazy. When you have nothing better to do. And that's that's why that's why school's not a good thing for me. <laughs> you, you can't put me in a structured environment. I cause too much problem, which is why it's not a good thing for me to be in a cubicle. Mm. Right? It has to be true, chaotic. True. It has to be crazy. It has to have a lot going on. So yeah, you know, idle hands. Yeah, yeah, idle hands. Yeah. So um, sorry, I actually had this question a long time ago. <laughs> oh, my bad, dude. My but bad. No, no, it's fine. The um, the press pause. You right. Where, where did that come from? Okay. Um, I get this. We're thinking about the branding that we were talking about earlier. Right. So. It's the what is a uh, what is it what is it the Shrek thing? Uh, it's, uh, an ogre is like an onion. Yeah, the layers. It has layers. Yeah, yeah. Right, and there is there is one thing I love. I love stuff that builds on stuff. I love stuff that is more than just what it is. Right. Yeah. And so a like double entendres. All kinds of fun things, you know, yeah. puns. Yeah. Hey, puns, actually. Puns are so funny. <laughs> Most puns are corny. I can't stand it, but really, really clever puns are awesome, but um, corny puns. Ugh. You know, you say that, but you still laugh, right? I mean, yeah. they're still funny. <laughs> um, it's one of those things where with press pause, I, I, like, the, I like the name of it because I was, I was talking to my wife and we we're talking about um, making a name for the business because mm -hmm. got to have that text right off, right? You gotta have a reason to spend the money, otherwise the wife's gonna get you. <laughs> and um, it's like I was gonna take a picture of this model by. She's like, for what reason I have a business, <laughs> right? But um, anyways, we're, we're talking about a uh, the name of it, and I was like, I like as we're going through all these scenarios and all these concepts uh, of different things, and it's a lot of playing and joking. Um, I really got fixated on. Um, pausing mm -hmm. right because the truth is like i was talking before you're taking a thousand photos of someone it's a thousand moments mm -hmm. there are moments in time yeah and especially with my photography teacher who was very big on you know like photojournalism and raw moments like you know she liked portraiture she hated you posing she hated posing mm -hmm. but she hated posing she was like if you need to smack somebody with something <laughs> You smack them, snap the pick. Mm. Like she was, she was dead serious about it too. She was very big about in the moment. It's right? one of that natural. Yeah. Okay. And um, and I appreciated that, right? And and that's the reason, like, even when I'm talking about the, um, and you see that come out when I was talking about the music. Yeah, yeah. Where 
I'm waiting for that, not that moment they like, not that moment they want you to see. Mm -hmm. I want that real moment. I want that I want that moment where they think no one's gone. Even even when you're a crowd full of people, when you're in the zone and you're feeling it, you will have moments of self reflection. Yeah. You'll stop for half a second and be like, Did I do that right? Mm -hmm. Did I sing this right? Did I you know what I mean? Did I hit that right note? Yeah. You know, you're gonna be like, Man, is this this is my life, you know? Mm -hmm. Or they're just just putting their heart into it and just everything's there. And even though there can be a room full of people or a huge crowd or whatever, that's gone. It's just them there. That mic ain't there. Just them. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just raw motion coming out. So those are the things I look for. Those are those, are those moments um, where you could argue they didn't even realize where they were. Mm -hmm. Right? As opposed to just portraiture. So to me, if this was a recording, you would just press pause on it. Yeah. Right? You're going through life and you're freezing that moment in time. Mm hmm and you're just you're capturing it you're, you're you're solidifying that and you're able to thanks to technology because you think back to you know several hundred years ago mankind's been around for a minute right you didn't yeah. have that man that was yeah. gone you know you can it's make an old thing. painting but it's all posed it's you know it's not a thing that's that's the one cool thing about um photography and videography is that it can rewind time mm -hmm. and give you that that real moment there that, that sense right yeah and so you have press pause in the sense of that recording of life, that ongoing movie, right? I think there's a there's an episode of Boondocks. Um, yeah, did you ever see that cartoon oh, yeah. Boondocks? Yeah, where Riley's sitting there in front of a gangster, a full real life gangster, and he's threatening to kill him. Mm -hmm. He's just like this little kid selling candy, but these these guys are threatening to kill him, and he's like, I told myself this wasn't a movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? But then I said, "What if it is?" And then you just like let the guy have it, you know? <laughs> just, just, just straight went off on the dude. And I'm just like, man, like I love that, I love that idea because when you really think about it, you can't press pause. <laughs> yeah, right. There's nothing you can't rewind or nothing, right? That's yeah. it. Life goes through. It's just it's like a really cool movie that you're you're always on a trail because there's a lot of times where emotion takes you over. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do stuff that you don't even you're like, oh, why did I do that, right? I can't control that, right? Yeah. Even the most stoic person still does stuff they regret. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, your life is sort of on rails at times. Yeah. And it'd be nice to be able to and just reflect on that moment. And <laughs> that's why I picked that. On top of that, and I, and I tell my wife, when it comes to being, and here's the, here's the pun part, right? The little double entendre there. I want, whenever someone's going through your feed mm -hmm. and you see the photo, I want you to press pause. I want you to pause and be like, hey, that's a good photo. And take it in for a moment before you carry on with everything else. So it's a uh, it's one speaking to the art part of it, and then the other side is speaking to what hopefully is the quality that comes across. I hope I put out decent enough quality. Yeah. I hope I hope that whenever it's out there, it's something that you want to spend your time looking at. Because again, you only live so long. You can only see so many things. You can only do so much, right? Yeah. You know, you can read every book known to man. You can read try to read every book known to man. It'll never happen. You can try to watch everything that's ever been done you'll it'll never happen you'll never hear every sound we just can't you know what I mean so you're limited in your experiences as a human being so hopefully as you're flipping through that you know that thing and because I ain't got no half naked women you do stop on this at least and be appreciate what it is before yeah. you carry on about your day for sure maybe that's what I should do <laughs> <laughs> right just go go the good route <laughs> well sex sells for yeah, sure it is, but <laughs> there it is I said those like what four Four billboards I remember, and two of them are strip clubs. There so, it is. I mean, it's. Well, you just, you just, you just gave away your route now. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so someone tries by the billboards, know that man's around here somewhere. Yeah, right. He's lurking. <laughs> but I mean, even with, um, I, I guess, just like most most advertising, like they use. Oh, recently, uh, me and Rachel were talking about the. Have you ever seen those manscaped ads on Facebook? Yeah. Uh, they've got a what's her name Sarah Underwood and she so she did do you remember Attack of the Show yep so she was on Attack of the Show she was a host on there and I don't know what else she's done but she's not the Who most cares? yeah she's not the most <laughs> interesting person but she's she's a good looker mm -hmm. and that's why Manscaped picked her and she's wearing like this string tank top and like her boobs are hanging out and they're they know that that's what men are going to pay attention to, and she's like chopping wood and stuff like that. But I mean, she's doing like 
just stuff that's going to show her tits. But that's that's pretty much the whole purpose is they know you're going to stop and look at it. And that's that's what sells. That's what people are going to press pause on is just basically they're going to notice, hey, this is an attractive person. Let me stop and look at this. So, I mean, that's if, if you know what works, keep doing it. Don't hey. stop. <laughs> Don't so, stop. I'm, I'm going to throw something at you here. and I'm going to pour this so you can have a moment to reflect <laughs> as you kick it back. Right. Now, I think this is the unfortunate part. And I see, I see this a lot in models. Mm-hmm. Somebody is an attractive looking person. They look great. And then what's the first thing someone says to them? That they look great. Oh, you, look, <laughs> you look great. You should be a model. Yeah, yeah. Right? And don't get me wrong. I think it's definitely something you should look into, right? I, yeah. I think I think if you really like being in front of the camera and you like, you kind of like being in that spotlight or putting yourself in surreal positions, right? Or just seeing yourself in a work of art, mm-hmm. right? Because at the end of the day, if you're taking care of yourself to where, you know, that you are a work of art. Your body is a work of art. I yeah, have to completely yeah. destroy my body. <laughs> I, 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 mean, I like my, like, me in my 20s was great. This is, this is gone to hell. This, oh my this God. is all shot. <laughs> you know? But um, it's one of those things of like, when you think about it, that was mine, right? Yeah, that was yours. And um, when you think about it, so one, you have the problem of, you have to be attractive to begin with, right? And so there's a little bit of, Yes, dice rolling there, mm. right? Or just God given, you know, the ability for you to look decent. But there's also the fact that, you know, you got to have certain things. You got to stay trim. You got to do this stuff. You got to be working on this. You got to be working on that. It's not a, I just roll out of bed, flip it. That's why literally every woman who sees a woman that they think is doing that, they get mad. They're like, how yeah. dare you? Yeah. You know what I got to do. Yeah. You know, it's not an easy task. So the one is an appreciation in that. Two, let's just say modeling in general. Not easy. Like, like I swear, man, you ask anybody who I've asked to model for me, I'm horrible. I'm like, are you uncomfortable? Yes, perfect. A little bit further. <laughs> just, just, oh, just get it. If you're not twisting your body in half, I am not quite sold. Oh, my God. It's, it's true, though, right? I tell them all the time. It's like, are you are you comfortable? I'm like, yes. I was like, then that's not the pose for us. Wow. Right? We, we, need, we, need it, we need it uncomfortable. We need to exaggerate. We need to extend it, right? That's crazy. And that's just me, though. That's not everybody. Yeah, right? yeah, that's yeah. just my personal thing. But it's one of those, it's, it's really one of those things, and you'll see it sometimes where you'll convey to somebody, hey, I need you to do X. Mm-hmm. And then they can't. Mm. And you go, okay, that's cool. And then you step back and you reword it like 15 times. And then you kind of realize there's a range. And mm. that, that point you need them at, they just can't get to it. Yeah. Right? Or maybe just have unrealistic expectations. Also an option. Regardless, you're not going to get what you want. When you find somebody, right, and it takes, and that's their craft, right? It's not just, oh, show up and, hey, I'm pretty. You, they have to put time in their craft. They have to practice. They're going to be in front of that mirror. You know what I mean? They're going to be looking at their own photos. I think one of the coolest things I saw was somebody did a slow motion, a slow mo capture mm. on somebody as they were doing modeling. And she went back and reviewed that herself to look at it to figure out where she could move better to get mm-hmm. more shots in in that short window of time perfect you know what I mean that's a level of professionalism that's yeah. that's going above and beyond wanting more right and um, so you got those two things right now you have you know how to, you know you're in front of a camera you look good and then now you have that third part of being sexy yeah and you would think that's easy you just throw on something scan the clad and you go out there right that is a dirty lie. Yeah. That is a dirty lie. The truth is, there are plenty of women mm-hmm. and many men yeah. who don't know how to be sexy. They, they don't know how to throw themselves out there. There's a lot of confidence in that. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of, in your mind, that self-regulating that lets you know that what you're doing may not be, you know, like socially, right? You know what I mean? Like, we don't want you going around and like, like this, and like, oh, like every yeah. time you talk, it's like, hey, we're at church. You need to calm down. Yeah, yeah. this is Lord's house. <laughs> you, yeah. know, you need to yeah. act right. They, you know what I mean? Like that part, you need but to be in able, that moment. In that moment, you need to click. You need to working. hit it, yeah. and you need to draw everyone's attention. You need to be able to rein all that in. You got to be able to bring in all that sexiness, right? Yeah. You just put a girl out there in a bikini, just clacking away at a piece of wood. You're like, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, <laughs> it's cool and all, but that's not going to sell as much as somebody who's just like selling it, like boom, yeah, yeah. boom, boom, and. So I'm going to go and say this. I ain't seen it. I ain't seen that one. Mm. I'm going to look that one up. Yeah. But 
this is this is this is why it's unfortunate for me to do what I do. Is I'm gonna be in there breaking, you know, you got a whole analysis, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. At first I'm gonna be like, oh, that's nice. Well, this is how I look at it. You got this here, you got that there, you got this here. I don't think that's sold very well. Yeah. It really kind of ruins everything. Yeah. You know, I can't even look at a photo anymore. Like I'm sitting on Facebook and like for me, because I, I do it with my camera and everything else, as I'm going through Facebook with people's cell phones, I'm like, I can't even see a face. <laughs> Like to everybody else, they see a face. Like yeah, there's yeah. a face there. I'm like, that's just those are pixels. Pixels. I don't yep. see nothing. That is yep. not. That doesn't even resemble a human being. Like how can you even see anything? Because, you know, I'm used to seeing something different, right? Yeah. But, you know, you're analyzing the whole the whole concept. Oh, you're. <laughs> oh, I was gonna wait till you're done, but All yeah, right. carry on. Yeah. Cheers. <sighs> so yeah, I've got a friend named Nelson Gonzalez. And mm-hmm. um, Nelson's a photographer, and he he introduced me to that concept, which I had it in music already. So I started doing music about three years ago, and when I actually started creating music, like and figuring out how the sounds are put together, it changed the way I listen to music from then on out. Because instead of just listening to the music. I was like seeing the music. Right. Like right. I could see the hi hats. I could see the snares and the drums. Like I could see everything. And I was like trying to picture how the the musician like what were they thinking? Like why did they play that note that way? And how were they moving their body? And like like all those thoughts go through my mind. Like when I went to Luis's um their their concert, I was like watching and Elizabeth played the violin. I was watching their drummer drum, and I was watching Louise play the piano. And I was like, "How is she feeling? Like, what? what like, is she, is she feeling the crowd? Like, how are, how are we doing? Like, every, like all right. these thoughts are going through my mind instead of just listening to the music. And with photography, like, ever since I've like started making videos and stuff like that, that goes through my head too. I'm just like, like when I was see when I'm watching a movie, like me and Rachel would watch a movie. I'm just like. You see that color grading? That's yeah, beautiful. But- <laughs> <laughs> like, why did they? Why did they go from from this scene to that scene? Like, why did they do that cut and that transition and stuff like? It completely changes how you just view stuff and how you evaluate stuff. You know what you did there? What's that? Kill the magic. Uh, I talk, I talk yeah, about earlier. That's the magic, dude. Destroying it. I get, I get, I get. It is, it is a subject that I, am, I get passionate about. <laughs> I get angry about man about the idea of the death of magic, the death of romance. Yeah, right. I mean, it don't exist. Then we swipe right. Yeah, right. There's no, yeah. there's no, there's no games. <laughs> there's no playing. There's this whole like, oh, I don't know, maybe you know, kind of like you swipe right, and guess what? If she swipes left, you'll never know. Mm. You know what I mean? You'll, you would be like, oh, she never even saw me. Yeah. No, dude, that takes away that takes away that thrill, man. That kind of walk up like, hey, what's up? I got a boyfriend. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't. <laughs> I know you don't. But you know what I mean? Like, oh, it, it yeah. takes away, it's, it's like that gamble's gone, man. That, that, yeah. that thrill for life, that sort of like mystery, you know yeah. what I mean? And whenever you start looking behind the scenes and you start seeing the cogs working, you can no longer have that kind of, you know what I mean? Right? Yeah. It's sort of like the, um, you know what the allegory of the cave is? Mm-mm. All right. Um, uh, maybe we can say that one for another time. It gets pretty deep. But let's, right. think, let's think of, um, let's think of uh, the Matrix. Yeah. Can you get back in the Matrix once you've been out? Yes. No. No. No, because you always know it's there. What's the guy say? He's like, you got to put me back in, man. I don't want to remember nothing. I, I can't even think about it because I know the stake's fake. Oh, because it's like, a, yeah. okay, I got to say. You see what I'm saying? Like, you're always going to know it's fake. Every time every time you look at a movie, you, you can't suspend that belief anymore. You're like, well, there's a wire right there more than likely. Oh, that was a stunt actor right there. <laughs> I see what you mean. They got okay, the lights yeah, coming yeah. from here. Obviously, yeah. there was a piss underneath that thing to make that flip. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you start you start breaking it down too much and you lose all that magic. You, lo- you, you know... Um, it used to be magic tricks. The magicians, they don't tell you how to do it. Yeah. And I always thought it was one of those things that they didn't tell you how to do it because it's a, it's a sole proprietary. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. If, if you knew how to do it, you don't need me to do it. Anybody could do it. Yeah. But I realized as I got older, I was like, I love that idea because it, it creates that mystery. Mm-hmm. Right? It creates sort of this Goliath in your head of like, how is that even possible? I can't conceive it because the truth is human beings are lazy. Yeah. Right? By nature. Man, we're always getting, it's like water. Always take the easiest route. Yeah. And a lot of these magic tricks, even though in your head you build them up to these crazy, insane, these massive scales. Mm-hmm. No, man, it's like a flip of a button. Yeah. Like literally as simple as what was it? It was uh, All Star Hot Wings, right? They're about, they're about to get me right now. Is that a restaurant right here? It's a restaurant. It's a hot wing oh, yeah. restaurant. So 
I'm sitting there and I was trying for the longest of try to like create something like it, right? Mm. And I'm adding all this stuff, I'm doing all this craziness, and I'm just sitting there one day, I was like, I, I can't get it to taste the same. I just can't. Yeah. For the life of me, it just it just won't taste right. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up. We're talking about people, we're talking about Memphis. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna tell you what happened right now. What are you hot wings? Ranch. Yeah. Blue cheese, right? Okay. So every time I look at my sauce, there's a little bit of green in there, right? Like, yeah, you know what else has green in it? What? Ranch. I'm going to tell you right now, what if somebody got lazy and said, I'm going to get some buffalo sauce and I'm going to throw some ranch in it. Mm. And then they looked at me crazy like, give me some hot sauce, give me some butter, give me some of that ranch powder. Mm-hmm. I mixed that bad packets. boy up. I fried me some wings. I threw it in there. I ate it. I was like, good night. <laughs> <laughs> Ten years. <laughs> Ten years I've been trying to do this. <laughs> good night. Done. You know, but once I took away the magic, because oh, before yeah, yeah. it was like, man, I just I just want some wings, and yeah. I have to go there, and like now it's like it's kind of like I don't even eat wings that much anymore, because like I'll get it. Uh, you know, the magic, it. the magic is dead. You yeah. know, I, I killed the magic, and I did that to myself, mm-hmm. and that's the reason now why it's like when I find something I generally like, like I'll see, I, I follow people on Instagram, and I'll look at their work, and I love their work. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I'll catch myself going, all right, so they slid this here, they went there with this, they dropped this color, yeah. they did that. And I just slap my arms up, bam, I just I stop it. Yep. You enjoy it. Yep. You take in the magic, you take in the romance because you're, you're going to destroy it. Like, yeah. um, another good way to explain it, I was in a relationship, right? And to put this in real life context here now, right? Yeah, we're yeah. going gonna to put this in real life. We're going to put this in practical application because you can use everything anywhere. Mm-hmm. So I'm in a relationship. And I'm looking, I'm like, this is going to fall apart. She's this way. I'm that way. This is going to cater and it's going to go this route. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. And it's going to do this. And it's going to do this. I'm calling it right now. I'm going to write it down. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tote to everybody how I figured it all out, how it's going to go. And it's going down the path. And I was like, you know what? I'm spending all my time doing nothing but worrying about the fact it's about to end. Worrying about that this ain't going to last forever. I'm too focused on that, that I've completely... I'm missing all the good times. Yeah, yeah. Like, I get it. It's going to end. Yeah. It's going to end. But I can either dwell on that or I can just build me some good memories to reflect on later. Just live in the moment. And so I just I just went all in. I was just like, whatever. I'm throwing the whole thing out. Like, I don't even care. Yeah. And sure enough, it went along the path. The difference was, though, mentally, I was like, I'm keeping the magic. Yeah. Because even though, yeah, I could see it and, yeah, I knew it was coming, there's something to be said about that that romance, that possibility. Maybe it won't. Hold not hope, right? Having that belief, having something there, maybe something larger than life. And with that, you're able to make those good memories. Yeah. Because you're constantly dwelling on the signs and you're constantly looking at everything and you're, and you're constantly analyzing it. Like you can't, you can't be in it, man. Yeah. You can't objectively look at something, right? And still subjectively be part of it. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, I know <laughs> right? what you mean. You know what I mean? mean? So you just, you gotta just, you gotta go one or the other, man. And to me, it was like, when it comes to stuff like that, um, you know, magic in general, yeah. you know, like I, I talking to my kids, you know, and my kid will ask some question. My wife starts going to a full blown explanation on it. I was like, cause of trolls, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they're like, what? No, it's all trolls. I'm telling you right now, <laughs> there are trolls in there and yeah. they control this. And I, it's just like, I'm, and I'm telling my wife, like they're five. Yeah. Let them be five year olds. Like I get exactly. it. Like you know, they'll learn all that in school. Let school break their bubbles. Yeah, yeah. Right? Trolls. Have right? you ever seen the TV show House? Uh, with the doctor. Yeah, yeah. So there's an episode where, um, so the whole the whole show, he's like trying to solve like the craziest cases. Yeah. But the um, I don't know if it's you call it a dean or whatever the per- the woman that's over the whole hospital she makes him take on like uh what do you call them like a physician job every once in a while working at clinic but yeah he has to put to, them hours yeah, in she she makes him go to the clinic and he hates it mm. but this one time he goes and um it's like a fat chubby little girl she's probably like six years old or something like that and the mom is i think the mom is like upset she's like chubby and She's telling her something about she can't have cake, and the doctor is uh, the house is saying something to her, and he's like, "She's whatever, you know, she's six or she's nine or whatever." He's like, "Let her have cake, like <laughs> it's <laughs> okay, because okay, you can always grow out of it." Like, right. every, like a lot of people are chubby as children, like that's a thing, and then as when we get taller and get older, like we stretch out and we don't get as chubby, but they're children, like let them. 
let them live their life. They're going to remember that time and then they're going to be like, oh, I remember that time. But it'll be in their past. So, I mean, it's <laughs> it was just a really funny concept. Right. It's like a lot of parents, you know, they might want their kid to have like a certain image. But at the same time, it's like they're a child. Like, let Bruh. them be a child. <laughs> I, I, I really like that part. That was that was awesome. No, I, the, so you hit me on a different note, man. That that kid, man, the boy will not eat. <laughs> I swear to God, man, it is. It is. So the, the, the boy ain't dumb. But man, that kid, he um, he will sit there, and he's figured out that we got busy lives. Mm-hmm. There's an older one, there's a younger one. They both need a lot of attention. And as long as he stays chill, quiet, he can sneak away with some stuff. <laughs> so like, you know, over time, you just you hit them long enough with the same food they won't eat, they'll eventually eat it, yeah. right? And that that works fine with the the older one. But this guy is just like, if I sit here through this meal. When everybody's ready to move on with their lives, they're going to be like, look, just throw it away. Like, fine, don't eat it. And then I just starve a little bit. And when they ain't looking, I'm going to get in that fridge. I'm going to snack on what I want to snack on. And then come dinner, I'll be full saying and eat nothing else again. I got you, son. Like, and it's like, man, it, just, it gets old, right? Because mm-hmm. like sometimes the kid will do this to where he hasn't eaten properly in a couple of days. I'm like, dude, no, we're going to have a conversation. Because yeah. I'm like reconstructing the wife. Like, what did he eat? And we're trying to figure it out. And I'm like, all right, you don't want to eat that. He goes, no, my tummy's saying it's no, it's no good. I'm like, all right, well, that's good to get pizza. You want to get pizza? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to pizza. I'm like, pizza. I, I thought I thought the tummy wasn't feeling right. He's like, oh, it doesn't feel very good. <laughs> I was like, but the pizza make you feel better? He's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm about that life. So we finally, I finally got done with this, right? Because I didn't want him to have a food aversion. I didn't want him being... Um, freaking out about eating Mm -hmm. right and like being feeling like he's forced to eat or something like that right yeah but um you know the guy the guy was just being a jerk too many days in a row and i'm like all right son i get it you're a smart guy you figured us out we have busy lives well i got bad news for you older ones can just go watch youtube (laughs) <laughs> I worried about her reading tonight. Yeah. She's going to go watch YouTube. Mama's going to go play with the baby. Just you and me, kid. <laughs> and we just sat at that kitchen table. That's awesome. Right? He couldn't look in any direction. It had nothing. It was a white wall. Mm. Sat there at the kitchen table. I'm like, you ain't leaving to eating your food, man. Dude, that dude, two and a half hours, that man sat there just tight lip like. <laughs> My bro. <laughs> You know, he's just... Uh, don't get me wrong. I respect Stubborn. him, too. The whole time, I'm like, son, I love you. I love this Stubborn. conviction. I'm so glad you're just sticking it out, man. So, you know, he gets in there, and he just... He noms on. He tries to cut a deal with me. He's like, hey, look, man. I've ate, like, you know, I ate this much. It's like a quarter of it, right? I'm like, you have to go a little bit further, man. And he's like, it's all, it's all yucky. It's cold. And I was like, man, I really wish I'd ate it sooner then. You remember oh, this next time? Man. And we just sat there longer. And literally, two and a half hours, he got about... Yeah, I'd say about three quarters of it ate. Yeah. Right. And it's just sort of like you know the Ryan parts of the hot dog. It was a, it was a corn dog. This is what he was fighting about. A corn dog that he requested. <laughs> the man ate the bread, chewed everything off of the stick, cleaned out the inside of the hot dog. That's after the fight. That was after like an hour and a half of sitting there. He cleaned out the inside of the hot dog, but he wasn't gonna eat the rind. And I was at this wow. point, I'm just like, nah, sorry, bud. You're just you're getting that in out of principle. Yeah. So once he had like a quarter of the Ryan left, I was like, all right, you're good. You can tap out, son. You know what I mean? Like you, you put Jeez. your you put your time in. But that's like that's two and a half hours. And when you got three kids, that's time. You know what I mean? That that's everything else. Like you know, because you know, on Instagram, I know I'll go out there and I'm really big about when I'm following somebody, go through and liking their stuff and mm-hmm. um, being like, hey, click. You know, you're, you're getting that traction. You need that stuff. I don't comment because if I did, like, it'd be way too much on me. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But I would love to. I'd love to more. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of stuff I'm like, man, I'd love to have a conversation about this, but I know I won't be able to follow up on it. Right. Because mm-hmm. I got three very small kids. You know, I got the photography stuff, you know, now with the whole quarantine thing. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm losing my mind inside the house. I pick back up World of Warcraft, so I know it's selfish, oh. but I'm doing it. <laughs> you know, but it's really one of those things of, like, you have all these other things in your life going on. Yeah. And every now and then, it's easy to just tell the kid whatever. Yeah, right? But, I mean, I had to sit down and be like, I'm going to, oh, man, I wish it was just cake, though. Like, to me, I don't know my head. Like, that's an easy problem. Like, kid just wants to eat cake, you know? Like, man, I just want my kid would eat. Yeah. Because even then, like, sometimes you're like, hey, okay, you want the corn dog? Get your pizza. Nope. Want ramen? Nope. Strawberries? Nope. Like, dude, you eat strawberries whenever, dude. And he's like, grapes. I was like, grapes or nothing? Grapes. You mean to tell me you ain't ate all day? Nope. You fought me all day? Yep. 
You just want grapes? Yep. Oh, I love your conviction. So <laughs> that's my problem though, because I do reward them. I like I love how convicted you are. I, what am I teaching? What am I teaching? That's so bad. I'm like, so when you mess up, and someone catches you messing up, mm-hmm. I need you to look them dead in the eye and say, I'm just a man. Yeah. And so we're gonna work on this. So now, yeah. now he's at the point whenever someone gets him, right? They're like, what are you doing? Like he's in there just breaking something. It's like, I'm just a man. I'm Ooh. like, love it, love it. And now, when he gets a little bit older, we get some more things, and it's like, you know, it's gonna turn into one of these full blown, like he's gonna be, he's gonna be in high school and be doing something just completely just dumb or dumb, just something that you already know. I'm just a man. Yeah, just a man. You know, nobody's perfect. Yeah. You know, we're all struggling with what we have in our lives, and I wanna be better, and yeah. I'm trying to get better, and it's one day at a time, and I wanna thank you for helping me realize I just did something I shouldn't be doing. Yeah. And I'm gonna work harder towards it. <laughs> <laughs> And it's just like, dude, I'm going to love it, dude. They put me Got in the office. Like, yes. yes son. <laughs> I love it. Hopefully, you take that to heart, too, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, hopefully, it's more than just words. But, uh, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's bad. I'm pretty bad about encouraging a boy to be ridiculous. <laughs> but um, well, I guess it's one of the joys of being, being a boy. I mean, there's a there's a lot of stuff that I put on them, right? Mm. Like I tell them, like, look, one day you're taking over the family, right? Yeah. Because part of, part of being the family, it's you got to keep everything in check mm-hmm. right when everybody's getting freaked out and everyone's getting excited you don't get the luxury mm-hmm. that you don't know right everybody else is frantic everybody else gets to be you know slaves to their emotion you're supposed to be the wall you got to get in there and you got to stop that you got to look at somebody and say you're being irrational yeah i already know right now like i got to tell my wife i was talking to him this morning i was like look i can't go to your mom right now and be like hey you're being irrational you can't mm-hmm. do that no one's gonna win yeah right it doesn't matter you can never tell her she's wrong it doesn't matter if she is wrong or not that's not anyone's job to ever tell a lady she's wrong. Yeah. Right? Your job is to fix it. Yeah. Your job is to say you're sorry when you're not. Yeah. These are the penances you have to pay just for being a guy. On the bright side, you got to be a little bit of a screw-up. <laughs> right? You gotta, True. You got to mess up. Like, that's, that's your give and take. True. But I tell them, it's like, it's one of those things of you being you, you will always have to... You're always going to have to be the rock. You're mm-hmm. always going to have to be the one to sort it out. When everyone's going crazy, you're going to have to be the one who grabs everybody and go, hey... Here's the goals. Here's things. Here's how we're going to get there. You want to yell and complain? You want to freak out? You can do that. That's fine. But while you're doing that, let's get A, B, and C done. Mm. And unfortunately, where it is easy to be a slave to your emotions, right? Where it's, where, it's, where it's like, let's go, right? Let's just let it all just, you know, give up the whole everything that, you know, gives us that extra level. Yeah. You're, you're not going to get that mm-hmm. because you don't have an older brother. And you don't have a younger brother to take up for you if you do mess up. Yeah. All the pressure's on you, bud. Like, you're going to have to handle all of that. You have a very excitable family. We have very, very strong, very opinionated women on our side, on both sides of his family, right? His mom's side and my side. Very opinionated, very strong, very much going to do what they're going to do, right? It's a... Italian and Latin and uh, Polish. Jesus. So very, very <laughs> strong, very strong women. Mama's a redhead. So it's, Jesus. you know, it's one of those things that they're going to do them. Mm-hmm. You know, like there, there's no disagreement. Yeah. There's no argument there. Yes, ma'am. Right. And it's your job as a man. If they're like, I want this bookcase against that wall. Yes, ma'am. You go put it on that wall. And five minutes later, when she says, no, what? No, nope, I want it on this wall. You, yes, ma'am. You get it and you put it on that wall. Ten minutes later, when she wants it on back on the same wall, yes, ma'am, and it's right back on that same wall. Yeah. It ain't your job to argue. It ain't your job to tell her our house is going to be. It's your job to do your business. Mm. But whenever she starts trying to throw a chair, it's a conversation time. <laughs> it's like, I get it. You're a little upset. These things shouldn't be happening, but let's talk about this for a minute, right? Yeah. And that's going to be, you know, this is sort of going to be his lot in life, you know, is he's just going to have to suck it up. So why not, whenever he does something dumb, have a nice little way to get away from it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, that, get that little bit of sweet talk out yeah right because at the end of the day you know i know i dig to china with the wife you know i get in trouble i'm like okay i'm in trouble ain't no getting out now baby let's go yeah, yeah, yeah. and i'll dig all the way to china i'll get all the way down there i'm i'm hanging out with president chi like what's up man how you doing bud like here we are <laughs> you know hanging out just because you know everything else and she's all crazy getting upset or getting angry that's not just her it's Everybody, if I get a, if I ever get in a situation when me and somebody are in a disagreement, mm-hmm. I'm just gonna go for China. I'm gonna go for broke. It's just it's gonna be a blast. I'm at least gonna have fun doing this. Yeah, and I'll fix it all later. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because in my head, whenever somebody's at the point that you're in an argument, you're disagreement, right? They're already upset with you, mm-hmm. right? Might as well have a little bit of fun so this way you can keep your wits about you. 
right? Obviously, no, don't go too far. Like, don't burn a bridge, right? To be like, yeah, you know, well, I'm going to go sleep with your sister. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> don't do that. But you can poke the bear a little bit. You know what I mean? Exactly. It's kind of exactly. Exact mess with it a little bit, drag it out. And then once all those emotions get through and all that anger and upsetment are kind of winding down and all that feeling is gone because you mm. can't live with that level of upset you know you, yeah. nobody can live at any kind of emotion you can't function that yeah way. you just can't you're gonna return to normal yeah and by the time all those you know, hormones and all those and I'm not saying like emotional hormones I'm saying like you know you get pumped full of like you know adrenaline and stuff like yeah. that too once all that goes through you and all and all those chemicals in your body run its course and you start crashing then you can walk up and do some sweet talk do some nuzzle nuzzles, yeah. right? Get in there, smooth it all over, be all sweet and everything, and everything finally calms down. You can have a good conversation. But I'm just kind of guy, it's like, you're freaking out, you're going crazy, we're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. I can either walk away or we can have fun. Which one you want it to be, <laughs> right? Like one of us can be having a blast, yeah. right? One of us have a blast. But it's, you gotta let that whole thing run the course because you go in there and you start trying to rationalize somebody or you know just not give them what they need, it's just going to build, you yeah. know? And even if you're like, I'm going to argue with you, it just keeps going and you're feeding it, right? But if it's obvious that you ain't trying to engage and you're just messing with it, you know what I mean? And as it keeps going up, it's just, they can't sustain it. There's nothing to build on and eventually it just comes down yeah. and then you can have that productive conversation about, I understand why you're upset. I can see where you're coming from. Am I right to assume that this is the order, this is the order, this is the thing, right? Here's mm -hmm. my viewpoint from this, this, and this. Would it be good if we did this, this, and that? Hey, we both agree. I like your sugar bottoms. Let's yeah. rock and roll. Yeah. Theoretically. Or maybe I'm just completely destroying my marriage. <laughs> no, it's uh it's it's pretty good. Everything's everything's all right. So Yeah. But Yeah, just teach the boy to be a jerk. Yeah. That's what I was getting to. Yeah. <laughs> right? Just teach the boy just teach the boy to be an absolute jerk and sweet talk his way because at the end of the day, like nobody wants to be in a bad mood. Yeah. You know, and you see it all the time, man. Like Somebody who can make you laugh is going to get out of trouble, mm -hmm. right? Somebody who can put you in a good mood and get you out of trouble. Being cute and coy helps a lot, you know, kind of diffuse the situation, right? Get you out of that mindset, you know? And I think it's a good skill for him to have. And, um, you know, I just wish, I wish the same would be true for my daughter, but I realized that she's, she's going to be fine some queen bees, but it's going to be like mean girls all day, dude. Like I told her, I was like, you're like, you're going to be a little mean girl. I, show, I was trying to show her the movie, right? And I was like, dude, I swear, like, oh, it's gonna be, you're going to be in there with Regina all day. Oh, that, that little girl. Yeah. She's aggressive. Girls, they, you know, they say they grow up, they mature a little faster than, than boys do, but it's, it's funny how, you know, how they turn out. <laughs> yeah. I've actually got, um, so my my sister has a child and she is oh i think she's six right and five or six and then um and then my cousin and my mom was taking care of both of them mm -hmm. but um my cousin's child she's like four or so but like just just watching them grow up and like their personalities change and stuff like that but we for some reason my family is it's just girls like there's no there's no boys that being had. Do you want to know the math behind that one? Go ahead, sure, yeah. All right. So there's gonna be a lot of praise for the men in your family. <laughs> <laughs> so you can go back and tell them all. Okay. Um, just messing around. I was online. I was trying to figure out like how to get a boy, how to get a girl. Mm -hmm. And I know it's all just coin toss, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's this lady who did all kinds of research, and that's what I love. I love finding people who did all the research and then just steal their ideas. Works out great. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, she had found some stuff where it was talking about how, like, the boy sperm is slower than the girl sperm, but the girl sperm dies faster. Hmm. So, whenever people are going at it, and the lady had a good time, there are muscles that help move things go along. Yeah. Right? So, that would encourage the young ladies to get there first. Okay. But... If not the case, and she didn't have a great time, then they would probably die off first, and then the slow but steady bros would eventually get there. So terrible sex creates boy. <laughs> now I'll tell you why I stand by this, right? So I found this before my daughter. Yeah. And then I had my daughter, and I'm like, okay, look, I'm sorry, but I remember that night. Yeah. Right? Because it does not take much effort for me and my wife to have children. Yeah. Like, literally, first shot, done. Like, it's an <laughs> easy one and done every time. Like, yeah. Every time has been one and done. <laughs> so I go, okay, 
I got my baby girl. Easy peasy. Mm -hmm. Done. Well, I need a boy. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to this lady's advice. And I, look, and I tell my wife this. And I'm like, I want you to understand, this is going to be terrible. <laughs> I can't imagine the conversation of you trying to explain <laughs> No, no, it was it was literally I, this is how I opened it up. Oh, do you man. want a boy? Oh, all right, you gotta man. crack, you know, you gotta crack some eggs yeah, to get yeah. that omelet. Now. Yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna have fun. I'm not gonna have fun. No <laughs> one in this whole baby making process is gonna have fun. But do you want a play mate for your daughter? She goes, mm. yes, I do too. Do you want a son? She said, yes, I do too. <sighs> now, maybe she's wrong. Maybe she's right. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, and of course, yeah. You know, my wife, she wouldn't be. She would. She wouldn't be with me. If she wasn't a team player. Yeah, yeah. Right. Obviously, yeah. I'm a lot of trouble. <laughs> so, gave it a shot. Mm -hmm. Boom, boy. That's Knocked crazy. it out the park. Knocked it out the park. And there it is. And there, and there's my boy. And she's like, I can't believe it worked. I was like, I'm going to tell you why I thought deep in my heart it would work. She goes, why? I was like, think of everybody who has all the girls. And, he, and she's like, yeah. And I was like, well, along this terminology, wouldn't it make sense? And he's like, well, he does look like he is a generous man. Oh, now let's think of all the guys with boys. Do you really think he's too terribly worried about her situation at that moment? And she's like, no, you're probably right. Yeah, does have a lot of boys. Jesus. And I mean, I'm just funny. saying, throw it out there in your head. Think about it the people you know. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's not. I'm just letting you know, based on my personal experience and everybody I know. That's crazy. It kind of goes along the lines. <laughs> now, here's, here's, your, here's the reason why it may not truly hold water. I say otherwise, but my wife likes to disagree, so I'm going to go ahead and give you a disclaimer. Um... So we go to have the third kid, mm -hmm. and I was adamant about not having a third. Like, I wanted one to start. She, yeah, yeah. she was like, no, we're not doing this. And I was kind of upset because I was like, you took that choice away from me. Mm -hmm. I wanted that choice. Yeah, I wanted to at least still have a voice in this. But you, you, you just say no, not even having a conversation and locking it down. Like, it strips that away from me, you know? And, yeah, we're married, and we have this life together, and... I'm not going anywhere, but it's still, there's a little resentment there. You know what I mean? That I don't even have a voice in this and that you can just put a lockdown on that and yeah. it's over. No ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah. Done. And it's a little frustrating, especially if somebody has such problems with authority and being told what to do, right? <laughs> um, but I let that part of me die. I just, it died. Whatever. It's game over. Like, fine. I get it. It's not happening. And I, and I came to terms with it and everything else. And then she pops up like as her clock's about to tick out and she's like at the point that she's not going to have kids anymore. Yeah. Hey, we should have a third one. Nope. <laughs> nope. We talked about this. <laughs> we talked about this. Nope. Straight up, dude. I, I learned her cycle and everything, dude. Like I dodged her, dude. I was like a ninja. I was up on walls and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm going to stay up late and watch TV tonight. <laughs> Yo, dude, I was, I was, dude, I was, I was doing great, but she got me, dude. I'm just a, I'm just a man. Yeah, I'm working yeah, on I'm just me. A man. <laughs> I'm working on me, you know. But I, I, man, I'm just mind my own business, and I, I just walk in the bedroom, and you know, and for some reason there she is, just folding clothes, just oh, all man. out there, and I'm just like, I just, I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I'm just a man, and uh, like I said. We're great at making babies, man. Boom, one time, bam. There's the third one, and um, out comes a little baby girl. Yeah, right. And I told her, I was like, "Hey, there you go, proof mm. positive." Yeah, you know, just a good time. She goes, "Ah, that was not a good time." <laughs> and I looked at her and I was like, "I beg to differ. The science is behind me. <laughs> Obviously, you're just spoiled. Yeah, you yeah. know, right? <laughs> you no longer know what a bad time is. That's yeah, that's yeah. clearly what that is." But uh, good, good little conversation, good little argument fight for the uh, for the dinner table there. But mm. yeah, no, I got I got another girl that way, um, and she just kind of popped up. So there's disagreement on me and my wife about uh, the validity of that test. <laughs> I stand by it. All right, I just say my wife's bold. That's some facts, <laughs> man. But it's just funny though. Like when you really sit down and you think about it, right? And you just look, and it sounds mean. Yeah. But I'll talk to guys who had kids about this, and I'm like, mm -hmm. "Well, let's talk about the night." Yeah, yeah. You, you think about the night, and they're like, "Oh, you're just trying to piece it all together." Yeah, they start going, "Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe we're on our own." Here you go, there. So it, it's something to think about. Yeah. And even if it's just a wish and a hope and a prayer, mm -hmm. again, I believe in magic. Yeah. I saw this one. It was, um, you know, Martin Lawrence, the the comedian. He. Uh, 
Josh. He was on some show. I can't remember if it Martin. was. Well, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> he was like on like Letterman or something. And they were talking about, I think he had a kid coming. And he was talking about it. And I think he said he had done some research or something like that. And he had heard whoever was the most aggressive person during the sex that's what the gender of the child turned out to be. So if the woman was more aggressive, then you're going to have a girl. And the man was what more aggressive. Wouldn't that fall along the same lines, though? I, I, <laughs> you know what I mean? I and guess, I mean, Obviously, yeah. she was into it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I was like, that would be, you know, that's that's kind of an interesting case. That's interesting. And then I've also heard, uh, what was it? Oh, men who are, like, more active, like they... Um, like kind of like athletes and stuff mm-hmm. like that, they tend to have more females because <laughs> their balls are like more hot, the like the temperature, and so they it like it's heating up their body and something about um, like the testosterone or something. It's like killing off something i forgot what it was but mm-hmm. they were saying that like men who are like athletes or men who are active more right tend to have more females because it's like their body heat or something like that it's killing off something you know what it so is they're having a they're having a female instead of a male i'm, I'm still stand by my argument i'm telling you why <laughs> a fit man get the job done a little bit longer huh? I, yeah. you, know, you know what i'm saying buddy I get, I he, he ain't waited right. after just making out <laughs> 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 you know he's in it to win it dude that guy that guy's in a competition every day of his life yeah he ain't gonna give up easy yeah you I'll, know the other guy just sitting down and eating big macs and stuff he's like <laughs> hey i'm here ain't i you yeah. do what you gotta do <laughs> yeah man it's it's i don't know that whole concept of like you know we say it's 50 50 but you know people have their theories and stuff like oh that. yeah Is i mean it really 50 50 there's, there's don't i don't know if there's I'm sure there's some, uh, you know, I like, I'm sick by the magic. Look, I'm sitting there going, I'm sure there's some science we could probably, no, I'm thinking, let it be out. magic. Let, let it be it magic, be. man. It's like a roll of the dice, man. <laughs> you know, I will say, because, like, looking at the, um, like, the gender reveal mm-hmm. is awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it's really cool. And, it, and oh, it sounds weird, because I don't, I don't know what it's like for, I don't know what it's like for a lady. I don't know what it was like for my wife. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what it's like for me. And I know, and it sounds weird, right? And, you know, I, I'm not feel the need to explain myself here, but you know, at times I, I feel, you know, I'm a, very, you know, a little old school in me, right? You know, and you could argue sexist maybe, but not, not like this whole, like, you know, women stay in the kitchen kind of thing, right? It's more of a yeah, romantic yeah. kind of sense. But it's like, when I saw my baby girl on the screen the first time and I knew it was a girl, it was one of those things of my heart. It's just like, I have to do everything to protect her now, mm-hmm. right? Like the whole world got a million times more dangerous. Mm. Everything was scarier, right? All the bad guys had to be destroyed instantly. You know what I mean? Like it was like I had to I had to make more money. I had yeah. to I had to give her nicer things. Like that it was it was switched. instantly. It was like instantly. And yeah. whenever I saw the boy, I was just like, this dude's in for trouble. Yeah. Like this guy's gonna have a horrible life. I'm gonna destroy you, but <laughs> like ain't none coming easy. Like it's funny because you, you ask me, it's like so a little baby girl comes up, right? Mm. And she's 16. It's like in my head, I'm like, I ain't going to give her some breaks now. Yeah. That girl's getting a brand new car. Like, I'm going to be driving a hoopty. She's going to get a brand new car. I don't care. She ain't going to have no problems. She's going to have like AAA, you name it, everything. Yeah. And it's like, what about the boy? Well, whenever I went to my, oh, I got the story here. 12 years old, I go to my dad. Hey, man, I don't play video games with my friends. And he's like, all right, well, I have to have a computer. You got to build your own. What? <laughs> <laughs> worked a bunch of odd jobs and I built my very first computer from the ground up. Oh my god. Again, this guy's making read philosophy and all this other. He's an entrepreneur guy, right? You know, I had to do all this stuff. Jesus. I get done with that. I'm like, hey man, I'm done with all this. Can I get the games now? Yeah. Well, you want to play games? Yeah. We have to make your own. What are you talking about? And I learned programming. So I know programming <laughs> now because he forced because me to learn. You're dead. <laughs> At 12 years old, man. I'm just, I'm just trying to play games. <laughs> oh my god. And, um, you know, so I figured out eventually, because, you know, it takes some minutes sometimes. I figured out eventually I could just go back and work those other jobs that I'd worked before to buy the parts yeah. and buy the games. Yeah. But it took a little too long after I'd learned a couple of languages at that point. Yeah, yeah. Before it dawned on me that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're 16. What do you ask for? A car. I want a car. Yeah. I want a car. 
Built a 1983 Hunter Cord hatchback from the ground up, baby. <laughs> from the ground up, it was a chassis, bro. <laughs> Whole thing. Like, here's the funny part. We had bought three cars. I had to go out work jobs. Bought three cars that we tore all the part. Did them work. Tore, tore them all down to the bottom and built it all the way back up. Oh, my God. Bro, I could tell you. Probably to this day, I still build a carburetor. Man, Shh. ridiculous, dude. And Not because you wanted to. Not because I wanted to. Because you had to. Because we had to. I'm out there with my dad and working everything like that. And it worked out great, though, because... My dad already passed by then. Mm-hmm. But when I went to get my first house, what did I say? Build this damn thing my own. Oh. And I got me a fixer upper, right? I got this little condo, and like I'm ripping out drywall, and I mm-hmm. redid all the floors in the house, and I'm redoing bathroom tiles, doing plumbing, doing electrical, ripping all these things. <laughs> dude, like I did the whole nine, dude. I'm just like ripping everything out and all the stuff like that, because I'm like, it's my first one, man. We're yeah. going to figure this out now. <laughs> like, Man. Oh, there! Something broke that wall. <laughs> we can fix that. That's easy. Beautiful drywall work. You know, That's just crazy. smooth this out. Oh, the floors are damaged. Yeah, we we'll just get new floors. Just lay that down. Oh, we need a backsplash. There you go. New plumbing fixed. Like none of it phases me. None of yeah. it. I'm not worried about any of it because I've done all that other stuff. The same thing with the car. The car breaks. I'm like, I'm like, yeah, give me a hammer. We'll figure this son of a gun out. Ain't got to worry about it. So the boy be driving around a car that he's gonna build himself. I don't care what he says. He's like, Dad, don't nobody use gasoline no more. I don't care. <laughs> You get in there, you fix that car right now. So, and you don't want to do it to them at the same time. Like you want to do it to them. Yeah, know? and I know some people told me it's a disservice to my baby girl not to do that, right? Yeah. But I'm like, look, it's my baby girl. I'm spoiler. Yeah. You That's know? a choice. Like I, I'm just, you know, it, it sounds. And see, the thing is, like, some people get mad that I'm not giving her that same kind of life lesson to be that self-sustained and everything else like that, right? Yeah. But. At the same point, you know, my argument is, well, where is everybody mad at me for not giving the boy all the nice stuff? Yeah. No one's saying, oh, you know, the boy should have nice stuff and free things and everything. Everyone agrees the boy should be going through all the stuff. <laughs> They're like, it just, but it just, you, you sound so romantic about it that she needs it too. It's like, no, man, like she gets the nice stuff. He, he has to suffer. Yeah. Right. That's just your plot. You know, whenever someone breaks in the house, it's the guy who has to go stop him. Right. The trials. Yeah. You know, it's just the whole thing. It's like, you, you put yourself through it. You get that. The... The baby girl, she's she's gonna get the nice stuff because at the end of the day, like a dude can sit in the back of the room and eat paste, mm-hmm. but you can't do that as a lady. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like everybody has their own crosses, you know, to yeah. carry and everything, and it's it's really it's really sad and it's unfortunate, but it's but it's truth, it's reality, right? There's a lot of people that want to fight against it, they want to argue against it, and everything like that. But even people who there's like we live in a day and age now where there's more communication, there's more stuff, right? Mm. And You'll see these things where there's these people who are like, I was very pro career. I didn't want a family or anything. And now that I'm old, I really kind of wish I had one. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's that's one thing that I tell like, I tell my kids all the time. It's like, always push family, right? Always push family. Always have family. Always focus on family. Worry about family. Always get family because when you look at the most successful things, we treat our business um, employees like they're family. Everybody always talks about family. Even, mm. even um, you look at the Bible. They're all religions. They talk about brothers and sisters, and family mm-hmm. and blood, and how it all ties together. Because the truth is, at the end of the day, even though you and other people can always click together, the one truth is, you, you know, your blood is the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's 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 still there. That's that bond is still always there, and that's always the most important thing. And that's what I really stress on them. And striving for anything else and going for anything else, my mind doesn't make. It doesn't doesn't hold as much value, mm-hmm. you know. And I just I don't want them focused on anything but making making more family for me to play with because I'm selfish, right? Like you like I'm having to raise you, so I can't enjoy you. Yeah, yeah. But you're gonna give me the grandbabies. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I, have can I can have I can give them back to you. <laughs> I'm gonna go nuts if you try to pull this whole like I'm 35 and I'm still working on me. I'm like no, but. <laughs> No, nah, bud. Not anymore. I'm currently doing that to yeah. my mom. I'm, no, you're doing yeah, it. No, I'm, no. I'm 27. <laughs> my wife is 25. And, um, 
Yeah, I mean, we don't plan on having kids anytime soon. So that's you got to yeah, get on that. But my mom, she's been wanting kids since I was like twenty one. Like yeah. she, <laughs> she had to raise you. That's yeah. why. <laughs> and plus, she's got all girls because my, as I said, my my oldest sister has two girls, mm. and then my next oldest sister, she has one girl. So. Yeah, she she wants a boy. Get that boy out there. So the so the boy will take care of the boys. Yeah, (laughs) there you go. Yeah. Well, now you know the trick. Yeah, yeah, I do. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sorry. That's so (laughs) crazy. That's if that's true, that's that's a crazy thing. All I have is magnetical evidence, but I stand by it. True, true. You know, but it's one of those things of like, I mean, worst case scenario, right? Yeah. It's just, a, it's just a rough night. Yeah, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, everyone's had them. Yeah. That's the worst case scenario. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's, I don't know. It's it's a crazy thing that, you know, life in general. Like, just being able to take family and then to get them together. You know, there's so many people who don't right. have who don't have family at all. No, absolutely, right. And, you know, they don't have anybody to share with and stuff like that. So to be able to have family, period, mm-hmm. you know, is, is that magic, you know. People, oh, it's crazy. People talk about the, um, like, the like family get-togethers of, like, holidays and stuff like that. And then, you know, some people don't have the families to be with for Thanksgiving or, or Christmas and stuff like that. So to, to be able to, you know, to have family, period, is, is it's, it's awesome. And it's that, it's that build up. So there's another fun story. I love story time, as you can tell. That's, that's the point of the podcast. <laughs> right? There you go. <laughs> so you got um, you got my older brother who you know, he had leukemia and I guess to sort of flush him out a little bit more, like he was star of his basketball team. Um Captain's basketball team, quarterback of his football team. Mm. Right, you he know, the guy. <laughs> he is the guy, right? Yeah. He is above average intelligence, right? Good looking, right? He has, he's that kind of guy that when he walks into the room, even if you're not even facing the door, you turn. Mm. He just has that presence, dude. Like it is, it is something that I have rarely seen. It yeah. is crazy. It is infectious. Everybody loves him mm. in the sense of like because he just commands that respect. Yeah. So. He he's under he's feeling that stress even even at a young age he was feeling that stress of what a position like that is and he started talking about like I wish I was sick and then like not even a week later got diagnosed he started getting sick and then like shortly after he got diagnosed with leukemia yeah and um, pretty and I'm not downplaying leukemia but it's it's a lot easier to go through now as opposed to back then or I guess there's a, there's a yeah technology has yeah, definitely te- yeah, changed less of a kill rate but yeah I mean it's thanks in part for him being a guinea pig as yeah. well because of that right um, not a lot of people made it through his little test mm. so the it was just sad because even back then they were saying it was one of the better ones to have which really really show you kind of how things went right mm. um, the you're that young right you're going through puberty and you're facing death mm. and it changes you right and to kind of a lot of people don't know this about this guy because everybody likes to try to villainize him villainize him he like to them he's this guy who's going around just beating people up right Mm -hmm. like I mean he was a savage bro he was a savage like in high school dude like he got a disagreement with some guy at um over a girl or something like that and he sees him pulling out of the Burger King dude reaches in through the guy's window (laughs) pulls him out of his car as he's driving Right, he's like he's just trying to drive out to the street and just starts molly whopping the dude, knocks him out, leaves him dangling out of his own car. Oh my goodness! And just goes on and still orders his meal. <laughs> he still orders his meal, dude. Like, oh my like I'm not, God. I don't support this. Like, don't, <laughs> don't go, don't go beating people randomly at a Burger King. That's not a good idea. But makes but, sense. But it happened. <laughs> you know, I mean, do do his, do his hardcore, right? He didn't yeah. put up with nothing. Um, but that's what happened. That's what changed, mm-hmm. right? Like he got he got more aggressive. He got very angry at mm-hmm. the world, very angry at living. Yeah. Right. He got mad at the idea of just he was born, mm-hmm. and he was mad at that. He was mad that he would have to die one day and stuff. I believe. Yeah. We never really had a deep talk about it because he just didn't want to. Mm-hmm. Right. Our relationship changed. Everyone's relationship changed. But here's the funny part. Here's the one thing that they don't really reflect on is that like this is the same guy though that. 
when we were kids and playing football, I got frustrated. I got upset. We were tiny. Mm. And um, some kid beat me on a turn. And um, he got an extra like four or five yards. And I got upset. I kicked him while he was down. And he grabbed me and he just, man, he lit me up. Mm -hmm. And he gave me a lecture and he explained sportsmanship to me. Like this same guy who's going around beating people up, you know what I mean? Like pulling them out through there. And there's like these other scenarios where this dude like really imparted some very serious life lessons in me. Mm -hmm. Major concepts of being how to be a good person that would eventually lead to this guy who's molly whopping people in Burger King and living yeah. a very questionable life doing questionable things. Wild. 180. You know, he was... He went from Clark Kent to <laughs> Lex Luthor, right? You know, yeah. it's just a matter of a couple of years. And um, puberty probably didn't help during the time too, right? True, true. And so... This, um, this guy... To really explain uh, sort of the whole family thing, right? And you have this whole life building with this guy. And I have a whole life with this guy. So I'm building up all these relationships and all these feelings with this guy and all these other stuff. And which is why it's so much more powerful because he's always there. Mm -hmm. You can't get rid of him. He's always there. There's always that tie. There's always that bond. And even if you don't answer his calls, which I, I still don't because me and him just don't agree. Mm -hmm. You know, he still sends me messages every day. And, you know, every now and then I'll read them. And, like, you know, when I try to reach out to him or, like, I try to respond to it. He wants to ex escalate the conversation. He's like, you need to call me then. If you really love me, you're going to call me. I'm like, right, we're not talking, right? It's, it's, it's how, that's how unhealthy the whole situation is. Yeah. And it's sad, but I kind of have to do that. But he comes in town, and he um, he comes in town. He's at this like, little Super Bowl party or whatnot. This other guy tries to, that I'm having a disagreement with, and for me, having to disagree with somebody, I'm like, I'm just not going to deal with them. Yeah. I got so much in my life. I don't have time for this kind of pettiness. This guy, unfortunately, didn't. So he's, I guess, trying to start trouble. And he starts trying to talk to my brother and starts talking bad about me. Mm -hmm. Still don't care. I got kids to worry about. I got a yeah. job to worry about. I'm not worried about it, right? And uh, my brother's like going to the, like, this covert, you know, double O kind of deep cover kind of incursions guy on to keep talking bad about him, get all this information from him. And he starts trying to hit me up. Like, I got some information for you, man. It's almost talking bad about you. I'm like, dude, I know you care about those things. I don't mm. like if someone's going to talk bad about me. Let them. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you're getting all that out of your system. Keep talking bad until you feel better about me. Yeah. You know, and I still don't pay attention to it. Time passes. And all of a sudden this dude's calling me up, freaking out. Right, the guy was talking bad about me, and I'm like, hey, what, what are you like? I don't like, dude, like, you and me aren't really on a talking situation right now. Like, what's up, man? You're calling me at like two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning here, right? And he's freaking out because apparently my brother is threatening this guy, like, like full blown threatening this guy, mm -hmm. um, over this whole him talking bad about me during that one time. And part of me is just like, all right, dude, look, I don't really care. I gotta go, right? Yeah. Like that's your problem. Yeah. Sure, it's about me, but ain't gonna do with me. Mm -hmm. You know, I gotta, I gotta send this. But in my heart, I was like, oh, my brother still loves me. <laughs> like it's bad, right? It's like, oh, yeah. that's cute. He's still being <laughs> the only brother looking out for his younger brother. Like that's yeah. that's adorable. And I, like, like it just, I don't. know, It sounds weird, but like in my heart, like I love that. You know, yeah. It showed that he still cared in his own weird way. You know, mm -hmm. his weird Joker love. You know, it's crazy. But, um, yeah, that turned into a whole little. A whole little thing where I'm just telling this dude, like, dude, like, you go do it. You know what I mean? Like, you're two grown men, sort of yeah. out like grown men, but uh, drama. I, just, I can't <laughs> do it. I can't do it. But I don't know. Let's just talk about family, though, because even with that history, right? And that's mm -hmm. what that is. That's that history that you feel mm -hmm. when you grow up with somebody and you're constantly around them and you're having all that shared experience and that, and that, that commonality. Yeah. When even you have that gap between y'all, where me and my brother have not had. A conversation in seven years now. Jesus. No, no, take it back. We haven't, we haven't had a conversation in seven years. We haven't talked in five. Okay. Like the guy would show up, like laid out. Yeah. In my backyard. Whew. Right. Which I'm just thankful he didn't like break out a window to get in when it was yeah, cold. Yeah. Right. The part of me deep down would have understood because it was yeah. cold. But you yeah. know, like all right, whatever. It's a window, right? But you know, he couldn't get in, and I was passed out. Mm -hmm. Right. And we're upstairs, and he was downstairs. But no, he just like I come out for the morning to go to work, and there's my brother just hanging out on the floor. I'm like, bro, you That's know, call crazy. in. I'm gonna be late. Yeah. Make sure he's fed. Make sure everything's well yeah. with him and everything's moving. 
but um you know it's like you know those were conver- th- those weren't conversations we had right we mm-hmm. just talked as we're handling that business like that but that's no, been that long but even that moment that happened like oh, probably like a year or two ago mm-hmm. you know what i mean like all those emotions all of that yeah you know all that all that coming up together all that you know common experience and just every every emotion you felt up to that point is just there yeah and that's why family's so so powerful and important man it is that's that long that's that long talk about it it is but you know it's it's funny though because like i said it's 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 all of it though it's not just the hard times but it's also him giving me that lecture when i was a kid it was also the one time that dude tried to like throw a baseball at me man my brother like literally climbs what is it we're inside of a dugout mm. he climbs he doesn't go around he climbs <laughs> the fence jumped over the fence chases the dude down and educates him that that's not the best course of action right that's a brother you know yeah you know it's like that's, that's some touching brother. stuff you know and you know he's he, you know he's doing his work he's yeah. doing his job you know part of his job I guess right there right because the other part obviously is you know again you're not allowed to be a slave to your emotions right yeah yeah right you gotta be that rock you know, it's unfortunate. Yeah. Right? But, I mean, that's what happens, though. You know? So. <laughs> coming at me, bro. Yeah. But, fun times. <laughs> well, this will be the last, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, we got to save some of them, right? <laughs> yeah. Get in trouble. <laughs> Gluten-free, though. Oh, that's dope. So, reflect on that one. Well, um, thank you for coming on. Yeah, sorry, I only talked about photos for ten minutes. No, no, no <laughs> the whole point, like, uh, I, Rachel told me that when she hit you up, um, you were like, you know, I don't do music, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I don't do any of that. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, lately I've been doing music people just because you know that's easiest for me right. to talk to because people, you know, I do music, but like I'm interested in so much stuff. Like I want to do photography and videography and stuff like that, and I want to like just have conversations with everybody i'd love to have some doctors on i actually hit up some um the university of memphis like professors i hit up some of them i found their um emails on a website i don't even remember what the one i guess it's just the university of memphis website and but none of them responded at all (laughs) but i just want to have all kinds of people on because like every story that you told no matter what it was about might have helped somebody you know might have gave somebody some information so just you whoever you are as to somebody like might have given them you know a little bit of insight you know you taught me about the the child thing i didn't know that so <laughs> yeah. well, again again it's tr- I even if, taking it as yeah well. even if it, even if it's true or if it's false it doesn't matter like it's it's something you know what i mean right. so it's i try to have as many diverse people on the show as possible but it's it's awesome having people you know who who are an expert in their uh in their field, you know, you take phenomenal pictures, and so Thanks, I was sir. like, "Yeah, I've got to have this guy on. Just you know, just pick his brain." Yeah, we, didn't even, we didn't even talk about that, man. I mean, yeah, we have. <laughs> you, want, you want to discuss that, dude? I mean, I brought my camera with me, Maybe so we can, to, yeah, we could we could absolutely go over that. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, you have a question? I mean, yeah, but we got plenty of time. Uh, actually, so what what camera are you using? All right, so I got a. Um, uh, I like this. Is a great time to bring this up. All right, it's a. Um, Long story behind this one too, I guess. I'm gonna talk too many stories. This is a Sony A7R3. Okay, so I have the A7 III. I don't have the A7R. So, okay. You actually I'm gonna let you explain. Explain to people the difference between uh, Sony's R series and then their just other other uh, cameras, I guess. So basically uh, the R just means professional. Which is actually the truth, right? So they expect the person who's out there working every day getting paid to buy the R and then whenever they sell the ones without the R they actually strip away a lot of the features an example being uh, this one has almost twice the megapixels as the 3 does Mm -hmm. which is funny though because the 3 actually does better videography Mm -hmm. isn't that interesting I did not know that Um, just a fun fact just the way it works a lot of certain dials and things on this thing they take away to make it more affordable. Now, here's the funny part, though. At the price point that the A7 III is, it really should be the one you get. Mm. The truth is, the megapixels that are on in like an A7 III, 24 megapixels, all day you can use that for print on a magazine, and it'll look amazing. In fact, if this was on the picture I'll take with one double, if you took it, put it on a piece of paper, the size of a magazine, we couldn't tell. 
Okay. It isn't until you get to very large format. Like a billboard or something like that. Uh, a little big. I mean, even on a billboard, you can use like two megapixels. Okay. Because your scene is so far away. Oh. Um, so view distance comes into play. Because, you know, you get those big circles, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then if they go back far enough, it makes like small circles that yeah. turn into the image. So if I wanted something, say, the size of this wall, like this wall, yeah. and I want it to be magazine quality, mm -hmm. then I need that higher megapixel to make that a reality. So like posters or something like that. This also does great for like weddings and stuff because I could just take a picture randomly and be like, oh, all this three quarters of this is garbage. But this one little corner looks amazing. Mm. And you can crop it down. It gives you that freedom oh. to do that. Now, the question is, is that, you know, worth the extra like $1,500? Maybe. Right? Maybe. 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 I mean, that's, a, that's a gig. If you're doing, yeah, if you're if you're doing weddings and you're doing stuff like that. And that's sort of the whole thing. And it's like, I think there's the biggest problem everybody does is put a stigma on things, right? Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, oh, you got the, you got the R, so it's a professional one, right? <laughs> no, you're using, um, okay, I got, a, I got a real fun one for you. Go ahead. Okay, so I had a, uh, had a DSLR, full frame, that I was using um, with press pause when I first started. What brand was it? Nikon. Nikon. And I fell in love with a Nikon uh, D seventy five hundred. This is an APC camera, right? This is not considered professional by any means. Mm -hmm. And I, I just I don't know why, but I just fell in love with it because it was it was a little bit lighter. Um, it felt better in the hands to me. Um, it didn't feel like like Sony. Unfortunately, still does not feel right in the hands. It feels like a toy. Yeah. Right. But there's several things I have up on um, my Instagram and my website that are done with that. D7500, because especially like until recently when I got this one and I switched over to the Sony system, man, I was using that just nonstop. Yeah. I was using it almost exclusively because I loved it so much. I just, I just appreciate it so much. And the funny thing is nobody ever called me out on it. Mm -hmm. Nobody ever said, hey, man, like I can notice a megapixel tube missing here. Yeah, yeah. No, nobody picked up on it. Yeah. Nobody said anything about it. Nobody said anything about the quality on it. And I absolutely... <laughs> Love the machine, and the more nobody called me out on it, the more I use it. Like, let's, keep this <laughs> let's keep it going because I like it, right? Because I, I enjoy yeah. using it. Now, I did eventually switch over to Sony, mm. and the reason being, actually, of all things, uh, cosplay. Mm. Um, cosplay has, of all things, even though there's not a lot of it, I don't think there's a lot of it on my Instagram, really. Um, I don't think so. Has lately become the biggest piece of my pie. Mm. People wanting cosplay photos, yeah, you know, like the one you're talking about, the lady down in the water. Yeah, those were phenomenal, rap. dude. Cosplay, those right? are amazing. But they've been getting the most amount of traction. And as I went through and I study these things, I saw that I just, I love the the skin color that comes from the Sony. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, you want true to life, nothing beats an icon. I hate to stop you right here, but. Yeah. That is something that I've actually heard the argument for Canon. People have said that Canon has the better color grading. So what do you think about that? I think Canon has that bright, airy, dreamy, bar down to anything else. Okay. I think when it comes to sort of that mystical, whimsical, fluffy, airy, um, sort of like, if you wanted to make a bright and airy in my mind, mm -hmm. nothing is going to beat that Canon. That, the Canon color... Mm -hmm. You, you shoot it with that light coming back behind so it's backlit, right? Um, make sure that you're overexposed just slightly yeah. because Canons do great with being overexposed so you can still kind of bring back them highlights okay. where, like, in my mind, Nikon does better with the shadows, bringing back up the shadows. Um, not so much anymore. A lot of them are kind of... Everything's kind of melded together because technology is sort of best practice now. Yeah, yeah. But you can really get that bright, airy thing. So stuff like weddings, mm -hmm. I think if you're doing a wedding... Inside or outside? Um, outside. Outside. Outside, bright, shiny. Even in, even inside, as long as it's really bright. Like yeah. the whole idea of being bright. Uh, the more white and over the top there is, uh, I think Canon really does take the cake on that. Mm. I think it's, it's awesome for weddings. I think it's awesome for getting that really kind of whimsical look. When it comes to like photojournalism, getting true, authentic, what your eyes sees, colors, what's just, you look at it and you go, that's real life. That's authentic. Nikon, hands down, has it all day. I went to Sony because the truth is it looks processed. Their, their color technology in my mind looks processed. It looks mm. snappy. But we live in a world where everybody has smartphones. Yeah. And every picture you take on your phone goes through a thousand calculations. Mm -hmm. It's processed a million different ways before you even look at it. You take it in your head, it's instantaneous. 
right? There's not a very smart computer in this. Yeah, yeah. Right? This is like this is like a this is like the old Nokia. <laughs> right? That's the equivalent of the power in this bad. I say that, but it's not probably not true. But yeah, yeah. It's not like a iPhone eight, which is a or eleven, right? Which is literally like an iPad in your hand. Yeah. Like there's the amount of calculations that you do when you do a photo is ridiculous. Yeah. It is crazy. It is insane. And the fact that it can do it at the rate that it does, that's why they make their money. It's not because the camera themselves are special. Nope. It's because the software is special. Okay. And that's the difference maker. Yeah. Um, in the whole thing. So um I got this one just because it's more it it gives a modern feel mm-hmm. in the color technology, which you can always change them to match, but yeah. the skin's gonna look crisper. It's gonna look almost paler, which with cost pay, which is funny because that one, the first one with Angel Azareth was the first one I ever did in real cosplay, um, was the first one that really kind of took off and I had a couple of people hit me up afterwards after yeah. seeing it. Um, when I was like, okay, this is starting to get bigger. I want to get something that kind of moves more towards that area, more towards that space, because this seems to be getting the most traction. Yeah. Um, which was fast, way fast than anything else. Like I thought it was gonna be music for the minute there, because like music was overtaking portraits pretty yeah. fast, pretty heavy, and then cosplay out of nowhere just <laughs> so cool. It just it was crazy. It was crazy how fast that came on. So I wanted to make sure I got something that complemented it, and that's why I switched over to the Sony from. Um, an icon feel that gives them more of an authentic feel to more of a process over the top look because especially when you go into processing you can make them look e- it's, it's easier it saves time yeah over every edit to yeah. go through and make that sort of like over that top you know kind of I want to say cartoonish but I'd say more velvety kind yeah. of look you yeah. know what I mean you know they want to be able to see that and that's the reason I went with the Sony so what lens do you are you rocking? That's a thick lens, bro. It, oh my gosh, yeah, I love this thing. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and plug them too. I'm plugging the rock. <laughs> so uh, this is actually a uh, Samyang 35 millimeter 1.4. Okay. And I I'm like gonna, it. I'm gonna go grab mine. I like it so much. I actually got the 85 1.4 from Samyang. So third party lens. Takes absolutely amazing photos. The tracking works great in it. Uh, blown away by the uh, by the quality on it. Like I've been burned before with third-party lenses, you know, just not acting right. And I was really hesitant on it, but just sort of watching the reviews and everything like that. Yeah. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna give it a chance. I looked at so many raw files. It's ridiculous. Absolutely love it. Like at the price point, everything else. I went with it. I went out and got a speaker brother, the 85. And sadly, I think those are the only two I've been using lately. <laughs> you <laughs> so know what I mean? 35 like, and 85? Just, 30, just 35 and 85. See, so I when I got the Sony is when I started understanding the difference between, because I needed a lens. Like when I had the Canon, I was like just getting, I literally started getting a camera so I could shoot videos for myself. So I wasn't paying people to do videos. I was trying to save money. Right. So... Um, when I got the Sony, you know, I was like, I need a lens. So I started learning about lenses and then I learned the difference between a prime lens and what, what would you call another lens? Like something that's not just like one, one focal length. It's a zoom. It's like a zoom lens. Yeah. So, um, for those of you who don't know, a prime lens, uh, th- this is the education part of Romero Records podcast. <laughs> so a prime, <laughs> a prime lens is just one focal length. So 24 millimeters. Um, this, that's what this Sony has on it right now. It's a 24 millimeter, uh, prime lens and it's a uh, 1.4 is the, um, F stop. So, um, that's what I chose for my videos because right. I've heard, uh, What's the lowest you've ever heard? Like twelve? Is there anything? Oh my god, no, there's six. There's six? Oh Jesus. That's like uh, I think there's a common and maybe something smaller than that, but there there's definitely a there goes into It's mostly a uh, fish fish eye. Yeah, fish eye. That's yeah. what I was about to say. So it goes into fish eyes, what it's called. So basically it starts looking like distorted on the edges and um, but you can see it's just trying to make it it's like that bowl look, like if you look into a fish bowl, oh. that's the look you start to get. So, um, but yeah, this is at 24, so it doesn't give you that. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to give you a quick quiz. You ready? Go ahead. What all does the focal length govern? 
I don't know. So what? So the importance of a focal length. Here's, it's fun. Okay, so <laughs> all, right, all right. So this is length. the meat and potatoes of right, the podcast. Here we, we finally got there, boys. We finally got there. Okay, so there's a lot of, that play a role in it. It's not just um, how big the picture is. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna turn this way so everybody can see me. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so. Let's say you start off with like a 24. It's about this big. It's actually wider than what the human eye can kind of perceive. Mm-hmm. When you go to 35, that shrinks in. So you get a smaller depth of field. Yep. Or not depth of field, but a smaller uh, range of vision, I guess. And then you go 50, which will be about sort of the equivalent to what the human eye can see. Okay. And then you come into like 85, 135, and it starts, it really closes in that window. So it's how much of the scenery do you want? So let's say you want to take a photograph of Bob in a park. You go to the 24. You see Bob, you see the whole park and the sky and everything else. Let's say you just want Bob in a field. Well, then you go with the 50, there's Bob, there's a field. Let's say you just want a picture of Bob. Well, then now you're into the you know the 85 or the 135 um, because now it's just him. Just Bob. Now here's the next part. You could say, well, okay, can I just back up? Can I just step backwards? Right. Mm-hmm. So I got the 24 like this. If I just want Bob, I'll just get in Bob's face. What's up, Bob? How you doing? <laughs> can you do that? Absolutely. There's nothing to stop you from that. Now, there is something called lens distortion, Mm -hmm. where you stretch out certain features of the face. We live in a world of Lightroom, where a click of the button, fix that, and it's close enough. You know, most people won't notice. They'll never see it. Um, The real value comes in what you see behind Bob. Mm -hmm. So I have these three things here, right? Let's put the shot glass here. Let's put this uh, glass here. And then we'll put the bottle there, right? So if the camera is right here and it's filming this and I got something like a 24, 35 millimeter on it, Mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of space here. Yeah. You're going to see it way pushed back. It's going to really extend it out as far as you can go. So when you're on Instagram and you're looking at those photos where it's like some chick's legs like at the camera... And then, like, it looks like her body's, like, 50 yards away. <laughs> she has, like, like, man, look at them legs, baby, right? Yeah. It's real exaggeration. That's basically what they're doing. They're, they're, they're really stretching out that body by using that smaller um, uh, focal length. Also, uh, sorry to stop yep. here, the uh, real estate. Real estate does the same trick. We're killing the magic. Yeah, <laughs> killing, the magic killing the magic every day, buddy. But uh, real estate, they'll use a smaller focal length because um, if you're ever looking up, if you're in the market for renting a house or buying a house and you see a house and it looks like the room is massive, they could be using like a, a 16 or, as he said, as small as 6. But no, you wouldn't do that. If they would use <laughs> like a, a smaller focal length to make the room appear bigger than what it really is. Because if they use like an 85 or a 105 or something like that, the room is going to look smaller because they're taking a picture of a smaller space. I'm going I'm to bust some burgers, bubbles here. Let me touch on this real first. Let me finish this real quick. Okay, real quick. I'm going to get back on this and then I'm going to go right back on that one. All right, so real quick though, but if you use a longer length, it squeezes it all together. So these would look, this would look so much more majestic and it would look like it's right here next to it. Mm. So like if I'm standing like 500 yards away from a bridge and use that big focal length, like an 85 or 135, it brings that bridge up right behind me. Mm. So this way it looks really big and majestic as opposed to using like a 35, which would push it way further and make it look a little tiny bridge. Mm. And you're like, I think there's a bridge back there. So that's why that's important. And it's important for you to know what you're using whenever you're going out there and what effect you want to get. Not only how much do you want to see, but how you want the background and the foreground to interact. And then we go to death of field later. But talking about the real estate, here's a fun fact. You don't always want to use the big wide one. Let's say you want to go out there and do it yourself and you have like a... Um, a camera laying around you're like I'm gonna take my own photos don't just rely on that 17 millimeter that's on your kit lens to set it back you know put a long exposure on or even bracket the exposures and let it go don't do that the truth is you want them to fill the picture still Mm. even though you're selling something you still want them to fill something you know what I mean? Sure, give them an idea that, okay, there's two windows and some walls, right? But, I mean, it's, it's a room. You're going to know that. Yeah. 
you could accomplish more by taking a photo with a like 50 millimeter which is tighter yeah of a rocking chair next to the window with the light coming through it mm. and an expecting mother would see that and be like yes yes absolutely yes like this is the house now I can see this I can now feel this yeah sure I could see the big wide open one where everything's elongated and nobody can fix a perspective in Lightroom for the life of them for some reason because it's a click <laughs> of a button but sure I can see the room but you really want to sell that you create that emotion yeah. right sure you declutter and you get everything out of there and you make sure that they can see themselves in there you get rid of all the personal stuff but like a rocking chair with light coming through it maybe just a hint of a crib in the background right come on man mm. right it's going to create that feeling it's going to make them want to get it yeah like whenever me and my wife <laughs> we were trying to buy a house up in seattle back when we lived there and uh it is such a horrible market up there when we we're trying to buy a house mm. whenever my first daughter was being um you said seattle yeah we're up that's where we, that's where i met her it was up in the uh, washington area right seattle area and we tried to buy probably like Golly, how much? How many? It was like 30, 30 offers we put in. Jesus. And we got none of them. Oh my god. None of them. Oh my gosh, it was so crazy. It was a crazy bidding war, dude. Like it was insane. And it was it was right. It was right as we're like I won't say we're climbing out of the recession, mm -hmm. right? But it was insane. But there was this one house. It was brand new construction. My wife hates brand new construction, but hates it. And she thinks it's sketchy. She just, she 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 likes rustic, man. She grew up mm -hmm. in the sticks, bro. Like, her whole life was just picking up sticks, literally, and clearing out, you know, Fair blackberry enough. brushes. You know, it was crazy. And um, she had horses and everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she's used to that. She she was used to, there's only one road into town. <laughs> that was it. One road down. Yeah. When it iced, it was bad. You just pray to God that, you know, bus doesn't go off, right? I mean, yeah. that's how that was there. So... To her, like new construction, it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel homely. Mm -hmm. But we're walking through this place, and we're kind of looking at it. I'm like, yeah, it's kind of nifty. I kind of get it. And I don't really know. We come upstairs, and we go down this little hallway, and she's still talking bad about it. She walked into this room, and there was a crib, and the light's just peeking through with a little bit of dust in the air. And she just she is pregnant, right? She walks up, she grabs that thing, and she looks and she goes, "We're buying this house," like, boom. Oh man! Boom! Whole time she's talking bad about it, right there. She got that feels in her. Wow! And that was no conversation, no nothing. Like that's that's where obviously we lost it. But yeah. you know, it's really one of those things of like that's how that's how it worked. Now we could have gone through and we could have got another one built, right? But she didn't want another one built. No, yeah. it's that house, that spot, that room, because that emotion, that connection. Mm -hmm. So it's it's one of those things when you think about that, right? And you're thinking about what you're selling, branding, everything like that, right? To get back on that one. It's that feeling. That's that's the funny thing about photography. It's not just a... There's a science behind it mm -hmm. all day. But it's how you implement that science that creates the art. Yeah. And that's why just showing a room with a rocking chair in it and a crib, you're like, I get it. That's when, that was someone's nursery. Yeah. Seeing that moment and that having it to where someone could picture themselves there, that's going to make that sell. That's yeah. going to make it fire. Yeah. Letting somebody know that not only here's these amenities, here's what you have, here's here's what it is, but here's a place that you can see yourself at. Mm -hmm. Here's what you can see yourself doing. This is going to be your vision when you're here, what you're seeing, how you're looking at it. Yeah. And so that way, so saying that, sometimes that tighter shot is a shot you need. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not about seeing the hallway where you can see the actual walls. Yeah. Sometimes it's about the view you have at the end of that hallway that's going to make you more excited. Just an FYI. Um, can you explain a little bit of... So when, while you were saying all that, I was thinking about Boca. And, yep. uh, is that how you pronounce it? Boca? I mean, I guess. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think it's kind of like... Some people are like, Boca, Boca. It's, yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a, like GIF. Some people say GIF and GIF, like the, yep. the G-I-F. But so uh, this is my explanation. Mike can give a different explanation. But basically... It's like when you bring something and you're taking a picture and the background is like blurry, mm -hmm. then 
the image that you're trying to capture is in the foreground and uh, everything else is kind of in the background and it's kind of a little blurry. Um, how do you feel about the different, like the focal length, or not the focal lengths, but with the uh, the f-stops? Um, so what's what's the f-stop on that one? Uh, wide open, it's 1.4. 1.4. So this is also, this is 24 millimeters, 1.4. Uh, you uh, paid some money for that one, buddy. Yeah, it's a G Master. <laughs> I yeah. saw it. Yeah. I think this, so this camera was like 1700 mm -hmm. or 1800 and an amazing this, price, by the way. Yeah, for this the lens was thirteen. <laughs> <laughs> so the lens, to, so that would be like, for instance, I can't take pictures without this lens. You can't drive a car without tires. That would be like paying twenty grand for a car, and then paying eighteen grand for tires. That would, <laughs> that's almost the equivalent <laughs> to what's going on right now. So, well. There's a difference between, uh, you know, your everyday runner and your uh, racing slicks, right? Yeah. <laughs> and you got racing slicks, bud. Yeah, that's exactly No, right. I mean, that is that, that, that camera right there is the one that, um, like, vloggers swear by. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? I don't. Okay, so here's here's the pitch on it. The camera or the lens? The lens. The lens, okay. Um, the pitch on it is the 24 millimeter works out really good for you can get your shoulders up in frame. Mm-hmm. Still get enough of the background because it's wide enough, but because you are so close to the picture, it'll blur it out mm -hmm. enough with that 1.4. Because the wider the view is, the more things are going to be in focus. Yeah, right. There's um, there's less of the depth of field there. But whenever you get something close to it, you can push the back out. And whenever you got like a 1.4. It really, really helps really blowing out that back. Now, the problem is, is that you need your face in focus. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and what can sometimes happen is if you're too close to it, your nose will be fuzzy and your <laughs> eyes will be sharp and your ears are gone. That's happened to me before. And that's why you're typically going to have it to where it's shoulders up. Mm -hmm. Right, and you may not even go down to 1.4. You can sometimes bump it up to like a F2. Yeah. Right? To get it out it depends it depends what your facial structure is it depends well honestly how long your nose is yeah right that's what it comes down to um and because of the way it is and the great tracking in it because it's a um native lens you can have that kind of on that autofocus and it's quiet enough that it's gonna get you now ideally you're still gonna want to use your external mic so this way it doesn't hear the motor running yeah. But that's going to be the ideal situation. And that's why that's preferred. It's for vloggers mm -hmm. more than anything else. Like, don't get me wrong, 24 is still great for doing photos and stuff. But, it's, I mean, it's perfect. An example being if you use it in this setup here. Yeah. You know, it would, it would work great for something like that. Now, there would, there's not enough separation here mm -hmm. between us and this wall to really get that Correct. separation. You'd want to use light, so you'd have to have a light from these sides. And we're getting, we're getting into the concepts of um, lighting with videography, which, though similar to... Um, photography in every sense of the word because you know, you know videography is just like a whole lot of pictures yeah, right yeah at the same point it's a little bit harder in my mind I have a lot of photography will get upset there but <laughs> in, my, in my head like videography lighting is so much harder I've, to I've work got a with who just does photography he doesn't even mess with videography yeah it's it's really hard to really control all that light consistently and that often especially with moving people yeah um which is why photography looks, you know, so great because you're getting that one moment that lights just right and everything like that. And uh, when you have that constant movement, it's it really makes you blown away when you realize what uh, movie studios do mm -hmm. to make what they got. But that one right there, that is a that is a in my mind, I've always seen it as a um, more so a vlogger lens, mm -hmm. more so than photography. Now, don't get me wrong, for like landscape, awesome, mm -hmm. right? Still life, probably awesome, right? Um, people. It depends. Mm -hmm. uh, modern for, modern portraiture, sure, right? It absolutely work. Um, you know, you're allowed to use non conventional, like 35, yeah. non conventional portrait lens. Um, you're allowed to use it for that. Yeah. So I think I think it's an awesome lens. It's an amazing lens. Um, I that's the reason why it's so blown up though, is that shallow depth of field that comes with a 1.4. Okay, so I guess we're talking about the Booker, right? I guess we're going to yeah, depth yeah. of field. Yeah. Okay, so basically the way it works is the lower the number, the big the more lights coming in. 
right? So you got to think of it like dividing mm-hmm. or some something like that, right? So if you divide one by one point four, it's going to be um, greater than like one divided by like thirty five, mm-hmm. right, or something like that. Yeah. So the the idea there is it's very it's letting a lot of light at one point four. So Boca can actually be in front as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be behind you. Yeah. It's just on a focused light. And because it can't focus on it, it starts dissipating, dispersing. You know, I, I forget the actual term. I had to know the term. I <laughs> do. Um, uh, what the actual one is, but it, it just starts going away. And the wider the uh, the wider the aperture is, the lower that number is, the more bouquet you will get Mm -hmm. and the crazier these lights will be so if you want to run a test you would say you get your 1.4 and you get some christmas lights and you put them in the background on the wall and you focus like on this point here where they're back there and you're going to see those lights just huge because all that light's just stretched out everywhere Mm -hmm. well whenever you start bringing in that um, aperture making it smaller and smaller so less light can get through those lights aren't going to be so big anymore yeah. because they're small because it's a smaller area for them to get into. Yeah. And instead of it being these big, beautiful bouquet balls, they kind of turn into your standard kind of bouquet blur in the background where it gets a little fuzzy. So with it being fuzzy behind and something crystal clear, that creates that depth of field because yeah. it allows you to focus on what you want because your eyes don't focus on things that are blurry because it doesn't matter. You, your eyes naturally focus on what's crisp and clear, and it can understand easily. Yeah. And that's what creates that sort of separation, that sort of 3D look that sometimes people get um, by looking at it is that, that bouquet being in the background and that depth of field. That gets lost when you start bumping it up. So a lens is sharpest at like F8. It's typically understood to be the sharpest of most lenses. Not say all lenses, mm-hmm. but... Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to have a lot for me. I don't care. I don't care. It's like F8. Um, it's like pretty much a standard is going to be where it's at. Now, here's a the problem. There's no bouquet. I mean, sure, you can if you get like a long enough focal length and someone's like way out there. Yeah. But for the most part, that's cut out because the light's so small that everything becomes crisp. Mm-hmm. Right? And you either need more time or you need like, you know, a bunch of other... And it gets into talking about using your camera manually. Yeah. But that's what it comes down to. And it depends on the look you're looking for. Let's say you're doing fashion. Let's say you're modeling clothes. Right? Most of the time, I'm going to shoot you at an F8. Because I want that crispness. I want that detail, right? Mm. You know, someone's looking at that clothes going, oh, is is that like some kind of embroidery there? And they're going to want to zoom in and take a look at that, right? And I want mm. all that detail to come out there. Okay. Right? So that's where, that's where that, something like that comes in. Now, let's say you want to take a picture of somebody and just have them focus on the person. That wider open aperture is going to create that separation so you can really focus on the person themselves and not worry about anything else that's going on in there. And I mean, there's a thousand things and it depends what you're going for. I mean, honestly, some, some fashion things you'll see somebody who's just, you know, them and just like a piece of clothing that's in focus and the rest of it's kind of blown out and everybody's happy with it. Yeah. But for the most part, if you're doing, if you're doing fashion, you're cranking up that, uh, that F stop to make some quality. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I basically, I try to shoot an F1.4 whenever I have the chance. Um, I never thought of that. That was really good info you said about the two, about, um, you know, if you're vlogging or something like that. That's pretty interesting. I never thought about that. Usually, like, so in this room, like, I'm using this, um, by the way, I, I have a kit.co. Do you have a kit.co? Nope. You need to get one. You need I'm, to get one. I'm lazy. Do you know what we, we that is? Literally went over that. <laughs> Do you know what that is? Enlighten me. So kit.co is a website. They actually were kit.com, but they changed to kit.co. I don't know why. Chipper. But, um, <laughs> no, it is. L- less letters? No, I mean, they, 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 they let it out to where it used to be com.gov.org, mm-hmm. okay. right? And then um, they said, okay, we can't have everyone's website be like really long. Yeah. So they loosened it up. So now you can have dot .info, dot .whatever, mm-hmm. and dot .co is a whole lot cheaper. Oh, okay. So that, that extra dot it whatever. probably saves thousands oh, a month. Wow. So, yeah. That's crazy. I did not know that. But uh, so the website, 
is literally set up to where like you can put all the equipment that you use and so it's it's mainly for like really famous people who do what they do so um like you know who marcus brownlee is he does like a lot of like tech videos and stuff on youtube and he'll I wanna, like i want to say i don't know it's a young black dude um Super, super peppy in his voice. Yeah, like he yeah. does. Uh, he plays Ultimate Frisbee. He's known for that too. But he basically has um, a lot of videos where he's like reviewing tech stuff. Yeah, and it's usually like phones or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think I think another guy. But he um, he's got one, and like um, Peter McKinnon's got one, right? And people like that. But it's for it's so you can see what like the professionals are using and it doesn't have to be photography it could be anything like anything that you see a professional doing you can see their equipment like they right. hey this is what i use so i've got a kid.co and I've, it's uh that newer ring light is on there but so anyways i said all that to talk about the lighting in this room right so i've got this one window in here and um, I usually keep it closed, and I usually use this newer ring light. I want to get another ring light, and I thought about, like, even while you were talking about the lighting in here, I was thinking about getting another light in here. I don't, I use these just for the cool factor. These are not for, like, lighting it. <laughs> no, no, that's... But it's like when it's nighttime, and I'm in here, like, making beats and stuff like that. Like, that's what these lights are for. But, um... Yeah, so I usually I'm usually in 1.4, trying to let as much light in. If it's like super bright outside, like a nice day, like it is today, you know, I'm gonna have to turn it down to whatever. But um, my, I, th I think I looked up some guy and he was like, this. It was one of those videos like, this is what you should put your camera at or your A7 III at. So uh, I like his suggestions. Sometimes it's a little too dark. So his ISO is always at. 100 for 4k and his shutter speed i think is at like 250 and um i can't remember what his 1080p he shoots a uh, 1080p at 120 frames per second at something else i forgot and his 4k is at 24 frames per second um those were his specs for that but i can't remember what he shot what he shoots the uh, 1080 at 120 at but um yeah so that's like I usually I'm I'm staying at the the 1.4 for my um, for my aperture, but it's it's worked out pretty well. Sometimes in this room, you're you're talking about the vlogging earlier. I'll have to I have to turn that ISO up a little more just because of that. The last video I put on Instagram, for some reason it looks fine on the computer, and then when I look at it and I, I post it, I'm like. Oh, that was too dark. <laughs> it was way too dark. So I have to change it. Um, I need to change. I need to make sure I, I like look at it and really evaluate it first. Cause when I'm like, I'll shoot certain videos and post them on Instagram right. with, with this instead of just like my phone or something like that. And, um, I mean, it's just me talking to, you know, the people who follow me, but so it's not too important and that last one was a little dark and I'm kind of upset about it but I'm like ah it's just a video you know what I mean I'm just talking to people but um yeah I need to turn up my exposure a little bit more probably at like I don't know maybe 400 or so because I had this at 1.4 so it needs to be probably like probably about 400 so I think I had it on 100 and with a newer ring light, it's it's pretty bright. As you, as everybody who's watching this video right now, they can see it's pretty bright. But um, yeah, those are just like minor changes I have to make to it. He's about to drop some knowledge. He's thinking right, right now. <laughs> He's so, thinking right now. Well, there's 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 a lot there, right? And, there, and there's a lot to consider. And so you're aware of World of Warcraft, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and I, I give the explanation to the audience, right? Um, basically, it's a video game. Yeah. And you start off really tiny. And you can't do anything but like hit something with a stick. Well, you hit enough stuff with a stick, and eventually you can hit something with a stick, and then you can throw something. You do that enough, and eventually they give you a third thing you do, like throw a fireball. So I have a fireball, a rock, and a stick. And you do that long enough, and you get more and more stuff. As time goes on... 
you understand the concepts of what you're doing and then you can effectively play the game, right? You kind of have to do them reps. So as we're talking about the lighting, right? And from a photographer's standpoint, light is everything, 100% everything. Um, you need to know exactly what the light's doing at all times for you to get a right photo. So an example being the light we have here, basically we have a one light setup. We have one light, it's directional, it's coming across from the side. This is the only side they, everybody else sees, so it's kind of flat. Yeah. Right, so it's gonna be a flat image. But if you're filming from this angle, you have this very dramatic look. We have these hard shadows. I think you can see it on me, right? Yeah, I can see it. Hard dark, shadow dark here. Dark side, bright side. And that that changes a lot. Now, light can do a lot of things. So like one, you have this sort of flat light setup that makes everything just, like I said, flat. There's no depth. You can't really see how long someone's face is. You can't see sort of like, you know, this someone's cheeks stick out a little bit further because you don't have, perceptual conception. You don't know how deep the moon is. Yeah. Right? The tip of the moon, right? The very front part of the moon you can see and the very back side of the moon you can see looks like a big circle. Yeah. That's what right? I was about to bring up. This is like, so if you're watching this, this is like the dark side of the moon for us. Yeah. Like, you're seeing this, you know, the bright side. This is the dark side of the moon for us. Now, that shapes everything. So now let's say you went to a two light setup. Let's say you had a brighter light on that side and a a little bit less bright on this side, right? A little dimmer. Mm -hmm. You would create more texture in the face and it would give them more dimension to us when you did that. Here's the problem, and I think you may see this in the films, you kind of have this part where you still kind of blend in a little bit in the background. Um, due to the focal length, it does look a little bit more extended than what it is, but there's not a huge separation between it. Now, if you were to get a light and give us a rim around the edge. We know from looking at somebody in the sun that if there's light on them, but not the thing behind them, we know their space. Yeah. Psychologically, we interpret it and we understand that. Yeah. On us, if we see light coming from like, let's say here or here, giving us sort of a rim on around our hair or something like that, we'll know that there is substantial distance now Yeah. between us and that. Even if it's just right there and it's just cut a certain way, to push it, it's just going to shove that even further back perceptually in our minds as we perceive it. So it's really one of those things of, um, in the game, the reason, World of Warcraft, in the game, the reason they don't give you everything at once is because you have to learn how everything works before you can use it harmoniously at the end. Mm. And I think the same concept applies to videography and photography, right? You start off with a camera and you start recording and then you start understanding depth of field mm -hmm. and then you start understanding this and that and really you know even though you at first understand hey I need light it does take a long time and I do think it's probably the hardest thing to learn is how to shape and control it how to really manipulate it yeah. when is the best time to use the light you know um, I think back to I took there's a photograph on my Instagram, I don't know if you saw it, of a um, young lady with, um, with sunglasses in her hands, red hair laying down, and there's a white line there. And it's kind of using the floor and some chalk, and not chalk, but uh, whatever, like paint, mm -hmm. you know, they're making a line there. And this kind of weird four section of um, over the square to really bring your focus into one spot, which is her face, yeah. right? Just brings it in there. Now, I have another one, though, of her at another corner. And that one's sort of flat lighting, so that doesn't matter. But same person, we're in Overton Square, and there's a spot where in the parking garage, light's coming in. And the dad was getting a photography. And I was talking about the light, and I was like, this is, this is one I really want. This light only exists for like five minutes in this one part of the day. And if we're going to get it, we're going to get it now. Right. Yeah. She had, she has long, beautiful hair. So I want to make sure I kind of got that light um, to come in. So as she's standing there and her whole head lights, as soon as she's like, she's standing in one spot and I ask her to back up, just go back one step. Mm -hmm. And she goes back one step and that light hits her and instantly the whole image changes. <sighs> right. Her dad's like, I get it. 
<laughs> oh, I understand man. why it had to be here and understand yeah. the time of the day and I, I, he got the whole thing right listen if you need pictures taken and you're like why am I paying this photographer a thousand dollars to take these photos what everything he just explained is why that's why a photographer not only has expensive equipment you're paying for that equipment but you're also paying for their knowledge, their wisdom, their expertise, like the average person would have known what you just explained. That take hey, take one step back. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you're paying for. You're if you're getting a real photographer and they know what they're doing, you're getting their knowledge, their wisdom, their expertise, and you're getting if you're getting a legit photographer, you're getting your money. Your money's worth. But continue. No, but I mean that's and that's the thing, right? It's understanding that light and understands what it does and how it how it functions. So, I would say you know you're talking about more lights and things. the The idea would be first, you know, figuring out what it is you want to accomplish, right? Like, what is it when you see when you see the image? What is it that you want to do? And then you get the tools that you need. I think um, there's a guy online. I'm trying to give his name. Daniel. Daniel Norton? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, guy, guy's a photographer, and he, and he gives these online lessons, sort of. He talks about a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but he does a lot of, like, a lot of, like, low-level stuff. But it's funny, because I watch him often just because you never know what you forget. Mm-hmm. And sometimes there's, like, something that somebody thinks is basic and they never talk about it. And then they say something, and you're like, oh, my God, that changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> everything has changed. Yep, yep. <laughs> so... Um, but he touches he touches on all that and he talks about light and, he's, and I think the thing I love which is so true is he says someone gets in someone gets into this and they start saying I need all these ghouls I need all these things I need all those things and you don't really know what it is you're doing mm-hmm. here's what you do you go out and you buy the one thing you need mm-hmm. and you use that until you need something else don't buy anything until you need it mm-hmm. and I think the one thing he leaves out though is you need to understand what it is you need right that's the first thing you need to establish you need to understand um what it is that you're looking for what look you want how you want to be presented Mm -hmm. and then that's whenever you make that purchase that's whenever you decide hey this is the route we're going right okay so if we wanted like sort of that rim that sort of ring i mean again right i mean let's let's talk about the room right can i do that yeah yeah, yeah, okay so in here inside the rooms we kind of have um what is that kind of a brownish beige right? Yeah, yeah. And on the walls, that adds a color cast, right? It's going to make it warmer. Yeah. It just is. It's just how, how it works. That's actually why I chose... So, you, I mean, I don't know if you really pay attention to the downstairs, but it used to be like... It wasn't like this color green, but right. it was an ugly color green. <laughs> I color hated green. it. And I found out that the previous owners actually painted the house that color. So I don't know what the original color of the house was. Huh. But it was like an ugly, like, green color. It was, right. it was it was terrible. But So we repainted the house close to this color. It's more of like a tanner color downstairs. But that's what the living room is. So, yeah, th- we painted it that way. Because it's more of a warmer right. tone, like it's it's kind of like a good mood. You see, like um, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, they all have in common the color blue because it's supposed to be happiness. You're supposed to go to the app and be happy. So we we wanted something that was a warmer color, not like a. You, you don't see a lot of people's living rooms black because <laughs> it's a dark, you know. Yeah, that's true. Dark tone. line there. So yeah, but anyways, continue. So. We have this light here, right? Now, here's the thing. Any color you have that's away from white, it's going to suck it in. Just yeah. the way light works, right? Now, what that will mean now is it's not so dark that it becomes a negative fill, which you think of light, it adds brightness, right? If you have black next to you, it's going to suck away. It doesn't suck away light. It just adds more shadow. Let's put it mm-hmm. that way. Yeah. Right? It adds shadow. So light adds light. Black adds um, shadow. It's going to have deeper, richer shadows in there. Now, with the light setup you have, it's sort of a flat light, right? Mm-hmm. But let's say you just wanted one thing to set up, right? Something to be thinking about here is, instead of buying a light, maybe I just need to paint like this right wall. Like, you have the blinds, right? Yeah. 
maybe you just want more light coming through, right? More light in general. And you're gonna have light coming this way on you, but maybe you want light coming this way as well. It might just be advantageous to paint that wall behind mm. you white. And then it'll reflect off and bounce back and fill back in this way. And that'll create the light you need. Yeah. Now, obviously, before you do that, I do recommend using like a whiteboard. <laughs> you know, confirm or deny said yeah. things. Yeah. But that's the thing. You think of light that way, right? Because it's bouncing everywhere. It's constantly going everywhere. If you were to paint this, replace this floor with just white, white shiny carpet, white, not, not carpet, it's sucking too, but <laughs> because it's crevice, you want flat. Yeah. So, um, like flat like stone or just like white tile, mm -hmm. um, white walls and stuff like that, this thing would be so much brighter. Your F, your ISO, mm -hmm. you would have to, you know, drop that down mm -hmm. to get the same image because it's going to be so bright, so much more lights bouncing around. Okay. Now, that's going to change your image though, right? It's going to change what you're looking at. It's going to change what you're doing. Um, the feel of it, because again, the color has not changed. The brightness has now upped. Um, this color is going to look darker. Yeah. The mat's going to look darker. All these things, right? Um, if you have light shining and really bright from this window hitting back behind you, the back of you is going to have more light on it, almost creating separation. So you get all these things you got to think about as you're doing these. Mm -hmm. And the funny thing is, like, when you're doing it, like, it bounces, light bounces. So you making one change in one corner, it can absolutely change something to that corner. Yeah. Right? And you got to be aware of these things. And really, it just comes down to time. And we live in a wonderful age where you don't, you know what I mean? We live in a wonderful age where you can see it instantly. Yeah. So you can make them tweaks and make them alterations and figure out really dial in what you want. But you first got to start off with what you want. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it goes from something like say, um, so the ring light, what, how does the ring light work? The way the ring light works, it adds light everywhere. Yeah. Right. It creates a nice flat image. Why do you want flat? I don't know. You want flat cause you can't see pimples. Mm. Fun fact. Right, there's no so depth on the on the face. Exactly, there's no depth. You can't see those cracks. You can't see them wrinkles. Hmm. It's all flat. Everybody just looks like they're teenagers. Interesting, right? And that's uh, well, not teenagers. You get the idea, though. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the reason people like flat light. So what you would actually do is you have the let's say for vlogging, you have the camera go through the ring light. So this way, there's light everywhere. Mm -hmm. Light coming up, light coming down, light coming from the sides. And you have a nice flat light that really shines on you, but because it's all right here, and if you have the background far enough, that kind of fades off and gets a little bit darker, yeah. and now you really pop mm. in front. Now, let's say you still want the background kind of lit up so they can kind of be like, oh, I'm in his living room. Oh, yeah. I'm here in this hanging spot. Then you have those lights behind you, not affecting you, unless you want like a little rim around you, mm. shining on the background so this way you can bring up that color, or bring up that light, so this way they can see it. And it helps if you add color, maybe a contrast color to what you're wearing, mm -hmm. to really make you separate from it, mm. right? And I mean, there's, you see what I'm saying? There's, there's all these little baby steps, little small things you can do yeah. throughout everything in order to change the look. And it just comes down to what it is that you want to look like. like yeah. You know, um, you can just go old school, like, I got you on a stick and I'm outside walking, right? Yeah. Like, this is just natural light. It is what it is. If you don't like it, get over it. You can do the really polished one. Like, what's the really polished one, right? You got your ring light. You got your camera going through it, right? You got the uh, separation light coming from this corner. Then you have the backlight lit up in a contrasting color to really frame you out. And then if you really want to go over the top, the question is, what do you want to give? a more authentic, homely feel, you're yeah. going to go warmer temp. If you want something more um, in colder and industrial, you're going to go with a lower temp, right? You're going you're gonna to bring that white balance down. Um, I know, like in a studio, I have a set temp that I use, that I like to use, and that's that's what I use whenever I'm taking like studio shots. Whenever I'm doing photography, here's a tip for photography. We had a concert. You ready for this? Um, if you could change your white balance, set it to flash. Mm. It keeps it neutral. It keeps it sane. So it's not constantly trying to judge or change or anything like that. And you can go back in afterwards and it gives you that ability to really adjust um, the colors on it. Because if you just set it to flash, that's just your, it's kind of like a naked light. Yeah. Right. And sure, you'll take a picture and sure everybody will be blue. But you can kind of bring back some skin tone. Um, with that, as you add more warmth to it. I got to pee really bad. You can talk and My tell bad. them whatever My bad. you want to.
you're, you're, he, is, he is now hosting the American. <laughs> I'll be back in a second. So, looks like uh, held the man a little long. Sorry about that. But uh, that's the idea, and that's, that's basically what you're going to look for. And again, it comes down to just shaping light. It comes down to knowing what light does and color and everything else. This is actually a celebration here for me. This is victory. Victory, I've won. I don't know what I won. I may have lost. But just feel like I did something. All right. Um, so you got that shape. You got that light. It's a nice camera. It's probably going to convince the guy to go out and take a few photos real fast. Uh, so he can kind of get used to it and see how it all kind of works. I do know I need to let his wife... Ooh, I didn't look at his hand. Um, maybe I just got him in trouble. See, um, I have some of this. Some of this tequila. So, that'll be good. I don't... Make a little, little shadow puppets. I don't know. This is a very awkward part of the uh, the podcast here because I'm just talking to myself. Not a whole lot to say, man. Just a, just a man working on myself. We all got problems. We got all the things we're going through. But we're going to get there, you know? Got to have faith. You got to believe. <laughs> I'm assuming this is all going to get cut. Like, I really am. Like, I hope it's not, though. Don't get me wrong. Like, for real. I'm telling you right now, my heart, my heart of hearts. When I go back and I watch this on Cinco de Mayo, right? Lots of margaritas, bruh. Um, it's going to be great. Oh, I'm sorry about that, man. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, no, you're all good. Cool. I told him I was just a man. <laughs> give him the, the, just just, a man. Give him the whole thing. I'm sorry about that. I'm just a man. <laughs> I'm working on me. Oh. So what are we talking? Oh, we're talking about the lighting in the room. Yeah, so that's that's something you need to, you need to think about on that one. It's just what do you want to accomplish, man? Yeah. Uh, so for this room, like I love the color. Like I always wanted this color. Right. Um, as I said, I painted my downstairs this kind of color. But um, I honestly, like I bought this carpet because so that's literally what this is. It's just carpet. Um, I actually bought it because it was kind of soundproofing. Like, right. Carpet dead sound, but um, that's that was pretty much it. And it's a lighter color. Like I got this from Costco, so right. they had a few choices of different like colors and or textures. And I was like, this this will do best on my wall. And uh, that was that was pretty much it. Like there was <laughs> there wasn't a lot of thinking. <laughs> Not into, a lot of thought like, that one. Dead in sound. Don't be a terrible color. And that was pretty much it. And um, mm. So far as like as far as decorating wise, I don't know what I want to do with it. I thought about doing some painting in here, but I was like, ah, let me just uh, let me just keep it the way it is. I've seen a lot of like vloggers and stuff. They'll have like like the the generic brick background or something like that, or they'll have all kinds of different kind of things. But I was just like, yeah, let's just do this. It's a, I mean, it's, this is not a light color, but it's not. Right. It's not like a dark blue. It's not like dark red, like maroon, or it's not um, black. So I was like, this will be fine for a background. You know what I mean? For, right. for the podcast. So I was like, ah, let's just roll with it. So so I guess I got a question. What's up? Like, I mean, how intense you want to get with this? I don't know. I right? don't know. <laughs> I mean, that's, I never really thought about it. Because I, mean, I was telling you, like, I mean, if you think about I was talking about my... I have all this stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm. And I told my wife, my, my biggest fear is to blow up, mm -hmm. right? I don't want to get in a position where I'm getting a lot of traction and a lot of people want my work, which one, it's like a, sure, it makes you feel good. Yeah. Right? But at the same point, like, I got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. Right? And there's some, there's some liberty in, you know, just having something lined up, like, every other week as opposed to having something, like, every other day. Mm-hmm. That you kind of have that that freedom to still be expressive and stuff, you know, and not feeling constrained. And I'm I'm very blessed. I'm very blessed in that I still have the ability to do a lot of freedom yeah. in my shoots. So when you think about this though, you ask yourself how big you want to get. And I'm, I'm gonna put it this way: everything gets restructured in my mind, right? So let's say, okay, so how would you how would how would I change this presentation? Right? Let's let's step it up. Let's say it's gonna go full blown, right? Um, like all this 
would have to get changed, right? Like you have the person over here, they kind of get lost. You're like, literally, you're putting a hole in that wall to put mm. a camera in there, yeah. right? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You got a hole in the wall, got a camera over there, got it running up over this way, you got this coming here, you got lights coming here, you got to have one coming this way, you got to have the multiple camera shots. And I'm just thinking in my head, I'm like, my problem is that I would do that. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? See what I'm saying? Like, but I also am aware that I have problems like that. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, I, like I told my wife, I, I've got a business. What do you want me to do? I got to yeah. spend the money. Yeah, you know? spend the money. I got to go out there and buy this, like, you know, 45 megapixel camera. It makes sense. Look, you don't know if I got to build something for a wall. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. See, because the thing is, I'm that kind of overtop guy, and yeah. I guess deep down, like I. Like I appreciate sort of that that kind of I appreciate sort of like a rawness sometimes, right? Mm-hmm. And I, and I do kind of like the idea of like a uh, like I love like a one light setup. Like mm-hmm. in photography, like you can go, you can go crazy with like you can go yeah. so crazy to do something you can do with three lights. Like it's easy to be like I need eight lights for this, yeah, and just go into town on it. And there's something to be said about the simplicity of just like boom, right? Something raw about it, something authentic yeah. about it. But at the same point, like you ask yourself like how far does raw and authentic get, right? You know what I mean? There again, the people on the radio are produced. Mm-hmm. We talked about that, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and there's something there, and it's sort of one of those things of like, at what point do you lose yourself? Because again, like all the all these things change, right? It comes from like here to here because it's not longer blocking. You got like a, a camera there. You're gonna have one in the hallway, right? Coming in this way. You're gonna have one back behind this camera on you, and there's like now four cameras involved mm-hmm. and light for every person and all these things and a little separation thing right yeah and it turns into a whole song and dance and at what point point does it become it's just the show and the material itself is lost yeah i mean that's that's really what i wanted to like grasp from this podcast was to show that anybody could do this like i literally i so this podcast actually started to give you a little history it actually started um I was in. I did this AAM program, and it's a uh, Academy of Advanced Manufacturing. Um, it was for military veterans, and basically, they Rockwell Automation taught us everything about the, the like the automation industry. So that's what I do for a living. Actually, is um, I work at Owens Corning, the shingle manufacturer. I work for them as an automation technician. So I use like their PLCs and stuff like that. And I do a little bit of programming, but mine's with like ladder logic. I don't you I don't know like C plus plus and all that kind of stuff. But um, just so everybody knows, Python's the only true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not that bad. I'm I don't know. Bad. I don't know Python. I don't know C plus plus. I don't know any of that. Now, machine just, language is the one true language, but <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So yeah, it started there, and then I just. Um, a friend Nelson that was mentioned earlier he was the first person I had on and then I had on like the other people I was classmates with we're all veterans so we had like military stories and stuff like right. that and then I you know when I moved here uh, I was like let me just bring on Memphis people and then just start like finding people who have businesses or just who you know who, who just have good stories and then just start bringing them on right. and whatnot. and um, so yeah I, I had no ultimate vision like i'm just like i'm just doing it so did you see like some of my older podcasts yeah i, w- I went <laughs> yeah <laughs> you went to the archives yeah so you know in milwaukee uh when i was with like all the am people we had that like table and we were in and me me and nelson and then uh me and dustin and some other people we, we were in that one room that had like the table and then it had that background. It looked like a looked like a manufacturing place or something, like a billboard in the background, and then uh, or a scoreboard. And then we moved to another room, and we did a couple podcasts in there. Right. And then when I moved, we actually lived on Far Drive, so it's it's a down a little bit of ways down here, uh, down this road. And um, I just had like the the microphone stands and that's all we were doing was just microphone stands. me and Rachel did some and then me and Trey Stafford Amber Russell you know I'm not sure who else but we just had like microphone stands and then I was like I need a table <laughs> I was like I need to get a table this is so like I hate it so I finally got a table and then I bought these like I bought everything at the same time like I got these uh, the table and I think the camera like all at the same time, cause like 
I want it to look professional, right? But I don't really care about like it looking like amazing, you know, like some sort of YouTubers paradise style background, you know, backdrop or whatever. Like I just want it to look nice, but I don't really care about like how amazing it looks. I'm, I'm not trying to spend thousands of dollars on just the setup. Like I just want to get it looking nice and be done with it. So yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> how everything started and work and my vision for it. No, fair enough. Yeah. Like I I like like I like where we're at. I I don't know what else other changes like. Yeah, it'd be nice to have different cameras so like we had a point of view of you right. and then a point of view of me, but uh other than that. I but I mean, see here's the thing though. I think a lot of back out, back background work happens. Mhm. Even if you were to have all these multiple cameras, right? Every camera you got, you can basically just double your work. Yeah. Right? Every time you put a cut in, every time you do this, every time you pull away there, that's just taking more and more time. Right? And so th this this is where you can make some Patreon and everybody contributes to make it worth it to up <laughs> that production quality. Right? Links in the description. <laughs> <laughs> so the... <laughs> But, I mean, that's what it comes down to, right? I mean, this is, it's a labor of love. Yeah. Right? And when you sit down and think about it, like, right now, this you're, you're do, like, you know, you're doing this because you love it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, this, this doesn't pay the bills. Yeah. And when you get to that point where, an example being, like, why did I switch to Sony outside of the cosplay? What was another driving factor? Um, I, I had a couple of very big shoots lined up. Mm -hmm. Right? Very big, like, weddings and stuff like that. Like, these things got to get taken care of. You know, obviously, Corona fixed all that for me. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. <laughs> but um, you know, and I told myself this. It was really one of those things of like, um, because I had these big moments coming up. It was important for me personally that you know, I move up, right? You know, this the stuff I was using, even even my full frame, it's a little bit older, right? Well, it was older. Um, but <laughs> gotta make sacrifices, bro. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so, it's one of those things of. Um, it was a little bit older and I wanted to upgrade, right? Mm -hmm. It was important for me to make sure the highest quality thing was out there. And I made those sacrifices and I sold those things and I switched over, right? And, um, you know, I, I went from having like, you know, like a, like a range of lenses to a smaller range of lenses that I could really play with and mess around with. Mm -hmm. And um, this is my only lens, by the way. <laughs> I'll play with these later if you would like. And then, um, <laughs> right. it's, it's one of those things of, to me, I made that I made that sacrifice. I made that call because, to me, it was more important. Even though I don't, I want to give the highest thing for that, right? Mm. I, I want to throw it out there, and I was in a position that I could, right? And you know, found some really awesome deal, and I, I mold on it for a minute. I was like, I'm pulling the trigger, right? It just it lines up right. It has the right skin tone. I got these big things coming up right here, and as opposed to me having to set these other things up, it's going to make more sense for me to be synced up with this, right? And I'm going to yeah. go this route and it's all going to work out well. Thanks, Corona. <laughs> <laughs> right? But, um, oh, it's good. It's fine. You know, I'm very, I'm very happy with the Switch. Um, it all panned out. But again, it comes down to those what you what you wanted from it, right? Yeah. And even though I do all this and even though I do all that craziness, I'm still like, I don't want to get it too big. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, like, I'm so obsessed with the end product yeah. more so than any kind of recognition, fame, or money that comes from it, right? Exactly. So I'm more obsessed with, what's the best way of saying this? So when you go and you take photos, right? The conventional logic now because of the digital stuff mm -hmm. is you take the photo and you show it to somebody and you're like, look how pretty you look. And they're like, oh, I love it. And they're more relaxed yeah. and they're more calm. I hate that. <laughs> I hate it. I can't stand it, dude. I'm from film. You know what I mean? It's oh, like, you're going to wait. Man. And I tell them that too. I'm like, you're going to wait. Yeah. You know, I'm going to show you one or two and that's it. That's all you get. Oh man. That, that is all you get. Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. going to show you one or two just to be a sweetheart. Just if it's something that we need to, if I think we've really had a shot almost, mm -hmm. I'm going to show you so we can go back and be like, look, this is, this, this isn't right. Yeah. I need this hand here. I need that there. And we're going to change this. Right. I'm going to show you that, but I'm not going to show you like, Hey, I think this is a really good photo. I hate doing that. And I'm, and I, and I tell them this too. I'm sorry, but man, coming up, it was film. Mm. You didn't know. Yeah. You didn't know. And it's that magic. Mm. Getting back to it, right? Yeah, you're yeah. You're waiting, that anticipation. You know, yeah. you're like, oh, I don't know if it turned out. I don't know what happened. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, you get it in that that overwhelming sense of yes. You know that that seeing that seeing their face. You know, if I get a chance to actually show them in person, mm -hmm. or even if I don't, you know, it's just like a link I send. You know, it's still like 
in my heart, you know, I know that when I get that text back saying, oh my God, I love them. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, thank God. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. one, it's like, it's like validation that not only they spent money that, that was worth it, right? Because I'd, I'd hate to take someone's money that, you know, they felt they didn't get the good enough product from. Yeah. It. But it's also the fact that, you know, you have all that time. You know what I mean? That little yeah. anticipation really makes you build it up in your head. And sometimes, like, you build up in your head larger than what it can be. Mm-hmm. You know? So whenever it meets those expectations and exceeds it, I get I get so happy. <laughs> I get so excited. That's my magic. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's like, a, yes, I'm glad you love it. I'm glad you had that fun. I appreciate that kind of holding on. I know a lot of people show them. Yeah. And I know that's a thing. And I know that we live in a modern age. God bless us that we can. Yeah. I won't. <laughs> like, I just won't. Like, I remember I, was, I forgot who I was talking to, going on about it. And just like Rawls, like, I won't send any of them Rawls. Mm. I, I don't I don't send them the Rawls yeah. and I tell them it's like film like I would never send you my negatives if it was film yeah you know like I, I just I'm not going to send it to you because on top of that like even if I did send it to you there's nothing to keep you from just putting it out there and be like this is this guy's work it's True. quality control True. and again press pause quality uh-huh. is in there right so it's yeah. it's like it's it's quality it's about emotion mm-hmm. right and all that's branding everything that I want and that's everything that I do yeah and that's what it's all wrapped up in right but again I don't expect anybody to have the same neurotic issues I got yeah. when it comes to pixel peeping down to 600%. You know? Like, I remember, you're talking about the one with the water. She's down in the water. Mm-hmm. I remember, since it was the first time I'd ever done it, overshoot. If it's the first time I do anything, overshoot. So I think I shot... You mean, like, take a t- like more pictures, more pictures than what I you need. need? I think I took about 1,200 photos that day. Oh, my God! 1,200 photos. <laughs> oh! <laughs> right? I, t- I took a small film. <laughs> Is that a lot? <laughs> that's a, that's a few. few. That's a few. That's a few. So how does she feel about that? She like, awesome. she, she's rolling with oh, it? Oh, she's awesome. She's Again, oh. her link is in the description. Uh, Jesus. <laughs> Angel of Azeroth. Really awesome. Really cool. Kind of kind of worked with me a lot. And, um, you know, we kind of went through everything. She had a buddy there. And we were, we're kind of going through everything. I know I'd showed up early and I walked the whole place. Mm-hmm. I always show up early and I, I walked the whole little trail that we're in. Even though I've walked it before, I walked it again. Because, again, the place we were gonna, originally going to go was closed. Mm-hmm. So everything had to change. Yeah. Right? Uh, there were bulldoze in it or something. So hey. I was like, you know what? Hey, you want to climb in underneath the bridge? She's like, sure. And that's where we got it, right? We're like, come on down to the bridge. Nice. And we went down to the bridge and um, we're talking about everything else. And um, I think her friend found something online mm-hmm. of somebody bending down to the water. So she went down to the water. And it wasn't until post that I decided I was going to put the fire in oh, her hand, okay. right? To really amplify it and add in that fog and all the yeah, other yeah. stuff. Um, so there was a lot of uh, there's a lot of steps to that, right? Mm-hmm. But it was actually a really bright day. Like if you look at it, it's like it's blue and it's oh, moody yeah. and all it's this beautiful. stuff. It was just a bright, sh- sunshiny day. Oh yeah. You know, we went through and I did the color grading and all this other stuff and all these changes on it. And um, it's one of those things of God. I forgot where we were on that one. I know I was going on the track. I was like, we're getting off subject. <laughs> and I tried to remember what the subject was. I was like, Arr, I've lost just the subject. Talking about that. You were just talking about that photo. Yeah, but I mean. How it came to be. It was just an awesome, it was an awesome shoot. It was, it was a real fun time. That's right. It took 1,200, right? So I'm, at the moment, I'm just like, I don't really know what it is I'm going for with the cosplay. I don't know what it is. The funny thing is, I went to thinking it was a portraiture, mm-hmm. right? I think that's the funny part. I went to thinking it was portraiture, and I expect to do portraiture. It wasn't even like two minutes in, I realized this isn't portraiture. Yeah. And that's when I kind of did that overshooting kind of panic of trying to figure out what's going in. Now, near the end, it, it really died died down, and I kind of understood what was going on. It's actually fashion. And it makes sense when you think about it, right? Mm-hmm. It's not portraiture. Yes, it's a person, and they're posing and everything like that. But really, their showcase, they are just a vessel you know it's all this that's going on right you want to look at this it's in the moment and it just took me too long because I was like okay this is not what I expected it just took me a minute to really figure out what it was that I was doing since it was the first one I was kind of messing with um, to realize it was fashion really that's really what you're doing you're doing fashion in it Mm. and then once I realized that it all kind of mm, zoomed in right and it shortened up yeah because most of those shots were really at the beginning of me trying to figure out exactly what to do because i was taking stuff and it just didn't feel right sure it was pretty but it wasn't right okay if that makes sense right you know yeah, yeah. like you have to make it right and it just took me a minute to really dial that in and you know you can't expect you know a cosplayer to be like oh it's like fashion 
<laughs> you know, come on, man. Let's, let's, it's like photography. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah. have a conversation. Yeah, let's, let's, no, get going. let's get it going. No, I mean, it, it took a minute for me to register in my head exactly what it was I was looking at. Mm-hmm. You know, and I talked to her on, on the back end as we were doing all this stuff. Because, you know, I know she... I know as we're talking, she kind of wanted like, hey, you show me some of these. Again, why I'll show the thing. She's like, hey, I saw some of these photos yeah. that we're working on. And I was like, no, those didn't come out very well. Like, And what I showed her was, I actually put out the thing. I was like, Here's, here is the entire role that I took from here to here. Right? And she's like, oh, my God, I love this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Right? And I was like, they're, they're not bad. But. <laughs> Look at the one that followed it. Right? And it's right. Here, let me show you. I don't know if you see my website. It's on my website. I put I it on seen Instagram. Sorry. And I put it on Instagram. I'm gonna show it to you, so you can match, compare it. And everybody, everybody watching this is like, "Bro, what is it? You just got to go to the site. <laughs> it's in the description. Everything's in the description. <laughs> Encyclopedia down there." Um, so here's my site. If you're just listening, he's trying to show me a, a video, uh, a picture that's on his site compared to other pictures. Right. And then, so that's the one I got out of it, right? Okay. And so there's a bunch of ones that are okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, now, which one? Do you like this one? Or do you like this other one? She's like, this one. <laughs> and I was like, all the other ones, you don't even show. Mm-hmm. Yes, they look good. Yes, they look nice. No. You toss them. You know, you burn those. Like, you know, like right here, like, yeah, I took like, like I said, I took 1,200 photos. Right? I think I gave her 12 Jesus. Right? And I told her, it's like, you always you always keep the best of the best. Yeah. Now, when you do stuff long enough, like an example being um, like a, like if I do a set now, mm-hmm. right? If I go out and I do a set for music, I know like when I first started that, it was like, sure, sure. A set would be like 800 photos, mm-hmm. right? Um, I probably only do like 100 shots now. Big difference, right? Like yeah. One eighth of the work to go through. Yeah. But I do, I do like one hundred for it, and then like you know, whenever they get it, it's probably like thirty, thirty photos they get in all, thirty five photos, which is still a lot when you think about it. <laughs> That's so crazy. And, I mean, that um, is a lot. I mean, the average person is probably posting like, I mean, even if you're a content creator, you're probably posting twice a day. Well, like, how long? How long's the music set? Yeah, I mean, what like couple hours maybe no just like a, a set that you have oh, blocked just, out yeah just a set okay. right you're looking like maybe 30 minutes if you're lucky yeah right and most of the people are sweating by that point yeah. for content right yeah. to share so you're looking at what even if you get like 30 35 photos that's like a photo a minute yeah that's that's pretty impressive in my mind yeah you know what i mean that's that's pretty good and um, i never promise anybody how many photos you're going to get either mm-hmm. right you're going to get whatever comes out is what it comes down to but even out of that hundred you're looking at one out of two out of three i'm throwing away and that's because I've done it long enough that I know what I'm looking for. I know what I'm waiting for, right? And I hit it mm-hmm. um, at the right time. And even then, like I'm looking at, it, I'm like, these four look similar, mm-hmm. right? These two look the best. These other two look too close to them. They're gone mm-hmm. because these just look better. And then if they look way too similar, then I just kick out the other one as well. Okay. And and it and that's part of that curation process because. Whenever you put that content out there, that's your name on it. Yeah. That's what they're always going to judge you on. And the internet never forgets. No. Yeah, for sure. Right? I'll never be able to run for office now because my stance on the the boy has to suffer. <laughs> like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's one of those things. True, like, true. It never forgets. And then that's what I was telling her, too, when we were talking about it. And I, they, uh, um, I told her, like, you know, the whole thing is, like, it's, it's important to me that, one, you have content. Mm-hmm. free to use yeah right but it's also uh, because I, um, it's, it's important that you have content to use but it's also important to me that there's some quality in there right and again absolutely um, we gotta have that, that that press pause thing and that's what we're talking about on that one so we can, we can it's a matter of determining what you want yeah right and when it comes to me like I'm always gonna sacrifice everything for quality mm-hmm. I always want everything I put out again it's press pause right like part of that is it's it's so good that as you're going through you stop for a minute you're like who is this guy yeah you know what I mean like that's hopefully hopefully what they get out of it and if not well you know I did my best yeah I'm just a man <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a man working on me somebody I need to put you in contact with I actually had him on the podcast um, is Dominic I can't think of his last name but he's big into um, cosplay type stuff he's he's dressed up as uh, I've seen him as what was it. Uh, Captain America, but he um, he goes to, like all the conventions and stuff like that. So he, <laughs> he probably he probably knows a good bit of people. He actually 
like tried to meet um, like the Power Rangers. I think he met Tommy. He was the like the Green Ranger and the White Ranger, and he's met a, a whole bunch of other people. But he's like he's huge into that. And I, nice. said, I had him on the podcast, so um, he'd probably be a good contact for you as far as like getting other like bookings for cosplay type people. But um, yeah, that's that seems like a market. I actually tried something that's like a music person, so I make beats as well. I tried getting a female. I found her on Instagram again. I I know sex sells, so she was like the stereotypical amazing cosplay person. She had thousands of followers, so I tried to get her to put like my beats in like a video or something she had. It didn't work out, but it was something I knew could help both of us you know what i mean like me having her um well like me having my beats and like her videos and people would be like oh that's a nice beat you know whatever and then her having some good content to put with her be- with her videos or whatever so it's it's something that i knew was like a a give and take type of relationship and for everybody else by the way who does any kind of content creation if you take photos videos whatever collaborate with people it it helps it will help you out your career because you will you end up sharing uh fans so your fans now become their fans and their fans now become your fans so if you need help with uh getting more fans that's a good way to do it is collaborating i think um something i want to pitch out to you it popped to me earlier but i forgot about it um and you bring this up there's a, there's a cool concept that I saw this photographer do where he does degrees of people. Mm. And it's sort of like, you know, Kevin Bacon yeah, knows yeah. one person, knows yeah. one person, knows one person. And I think you already, and I think in my head you already do it, right? And that you interview somebody and it seems like it's not too far along that you interview somebody else that kind of knows them already. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like already has that thing, like Louis Page, yeah. right? And... Um, you know, so a cool concept in my mind, just throwing it out there, right? Um, sort of a a series kind of thing, right? Where it's like you have somebody on, they introduce you to somebody, and they introduce you to somebody, and you kind of have this, mm-hmm. and you have this overgrowing network of people that you've met through one person to another person to another yeah. person, and it kind of leads this chain. And uh, I think it'd be kind of cool because I think anybody watching. Will be like okay, so they talked about blah blah blah. They're going to be their next, yeah, yeah, right. And then, <laughs> they're right? waiting. They're right? waiting to see who that person who they're talking about in that last one if they pop up or not. Yeah, okay. I, I, so I started like I started finding everybody through Instagram, and right. then I just get so busy. Like you know, I, first of all, I have my my full time job. God my, forbid, my, my, my yeah, <laughs> yeah right. God forbid, you got to pay a bill. Yeah, I have my full time job of working at Owens Corning, and then. I, I do music and I do the podcast and I, and I make beats and I, I try to do everything else. I actually just started doing audible um, audible books so I, I read um, audio books for people and uh, so yeah I'm, I get busy so I was like Rachel book my podcast people <laughs> i was like find people on instagram dude i love the okay. fact she messaged me i was like i like this yeah, like, yeah. it's like a secretary she's like all right we got this lined up exactly yeah. so um so yeah so i told her i was like go go back through my old podcast and at the end of every podcast is when i usually do this i'm gonna do it with you too i just ask you like who do you think i should bring on next so i know anna elizabeth gave me somebody um uh, i haven't brought them on yet and like there's some other people who have told me some people that I should bring on that I haven't brought on yet, but um, I have done that with some people. Like Victor Sawyer, he's from the Lucky Seven yeah. Brass Band. I brought him on because Luis suggested him, and um, I actually just found you. I think, I think I just like I do type in Memphis, just like right, searching Memphis, and I think I, that's how I found you. I'm not positive. But um, no, I can guarantee you, nobody recommended me. <laughs> like I said, I went, I, I went through the log. <laughs> you just so happened to have taken photos of like Luis and and Elizabeth, and I was like, that's very ironic. That you know, that's what I've been trying to do is bring on people who are right. connected to other people that I brought on. So it's it's been a great thing, though. I say force it, man. <laughs> it's it's been right because awesome I know thing. I know I know you ask right, yeah. and you know, but it's not. 
like you know it's not going i say force it man yeah i say if you need to like straight paparazzi style <laughs> right you know what i'm saying jump that fence get in their face what's yeah, up yeah. man <laughs> take some time out of your day yeah i mean it's been great though like I, i've definitely enjoyed this podcast with you we've as i said like we we if if somebody didn't know us they would think we've known each other for a while but we literally you know i bring people in who i don't know at all yeah tequila helps <laughs> <laughs> but we we literally just start talking and it's it's a great thing podcasts have been great for people uh, a lot of people just started random podcasts famous people have started podcasts and that's kind of cool but i think it's great when like this is what like one of my knocks on i love joe rogan podcasts yeah, like one of my knocks on his podcast is that he doesn't bring on any like average Joes. Like he brings on some military people, and but like a lot of those people are still famous for something. Right. He never brings on just like a random person, and like a person who's like not famous. Like right. most of his people he brings on are famous people. So, but that's one thing I love about this podcast. I go out and search people who are just doing something in Memphis. Like, you're doing photography. I brought on Louise Page because she's doing music. Like, she's pretty popular in Memphis, but, uh, and Anne Elizabeth and Victor and stuff like that. But I just want to bring on people who are just, who are trying to do something in the Memphis area and... You know, they don't have to be famous. They don't have to have thousands of followers. They can have six followers for all I care. I just want to have people on that have a story. And then we can talk. And then that's pretty much it. That's all I care about. But yeah, it's it's been a it's been a great ride so far and I, I hope, you know. I would love to have on people like um I'm really trying to get on like doctors and professors and um politicians. I think that'd be kinda cool. But um I don't, I don't really care. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I just like to talk to people and have on people and have good stories. So that's pretty much it. <laughs> you, want, you, want a, you want another funny story here about Louise Page? Scrolling through Memphis as well. I do that as well and look for stuff. And I actually started following her page. And when I took photos of her, I had no idea that's who she was. Really? I had gone through and I saw her style and I was like, dude, I love your style. I, I sent her a message. I said, um, I love your style. Yeah. Right? Um, you, you have a fan just for your style alone. Mm-hmm. Love the style. Amazing style. And then I forgot all about her. <laughs> I'm such a horrible person. I'm so absent-minded about this. I didn't even know who she was. And it wasn't until I went to send him because I, I was at my buddy's show, actually. Mm-hmm. And she showed up um, at that show. So I went ahead and just, you know, snapped some pictures I was there for her. Yeah. And it was funny because, like, I was like, hey! You're that girl. <laughs> I'm such an idiot. <laughs> like, you know, I just, it didn't even dawn on me. And, it, and it's just funny as can be because I didn't even remember sending the message. Wow. You know? Like, so I didn't even remember <laughs> yeah, yeah. joking. But it's really one of those things. It's funny. I look back at the message. It's like, I'm flipping back to the thing. I'm like, yeah, I really do agree with me. Yeah, yeah. Right? I was right. It's a really nice style. And I thought that was cool because I remember during the moment I was looking at it, I was like, they have amazing style. They, yeah. they really do. It's it's a really it's really well done. Yeah, and I appreciate that. When I brought her on, I was like, I don't know what to classify your music as, but it's it's good. <laughs> I was like, doesn't matter. Like it's just good music. So, yeah, that's 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 what I really like about this whole bringing on people in Memphis. Like it's you know it's it doesn't matter what you're doing, you know who you are or whatever. I, I can just bring you on and just talk to you. And like you know, you, all the stories that you that you shared and stuff like that. Uh, Luis had some great stories, and Elizabeth had some great stories, and Victor did too. It's it's just all about just bringing people on, and just you know, talking about whatever. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's been a great thing. Uh, do you have anything else to plug? Um, oh no, there's gonna be like I said, you gotta plug your. All there's, right, there's so press, an, there's an press pause. <laughs> press pause is his. Is it, what's the actual Instagram name? Press pause images. Press pause images. Okay. That press pause images dot com. Yeah, I'm going to have Instagram like press pause images, Facebook press pause images. Yeah, I'm going to have a thing up there, so y'all, it'll be in the description. It'll yeah. be- <laughs> YouTube press pause images. So you've got a website, you've got the Instagram. Got uh, you have person. Twitter. You know what? I left that one open because I'm really hoping somebody kidnaps it uh, and uh, puts up just some random stuff so it can be like, I disavow the Twitter. Uh, Has to make a public statement about it. <laughs> I just I don't I don't do Twitter. I did, me and Twitter fight so much. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Every time I get on Twitter, I just like 
I don't, it feels like everybody's looking for a fight, man. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. everybody's just trying to fight everybody. I'm like, can we just get along? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's not even like a, I hate you button on this. There's just yeah, like yeah. likes. Like yeah. it's supposed to be everyone getting along, but no, Positive. man, everybody's always fighting, dude. It's just so angry. I'm like, y'all need to, y'all need to hug. <laughs> I was talking about, so you can't operate at that level. Some of them can. Yeah. yeah. Bro, some of them can. My yeah. God, it is crazy. <laughs> I know. I have not, I don't do Twitter at all. Okay. It's a scary place. Well, yeah, uh, definitely everybody check out his stuff. As I said, it's, it's amazing content. Um, I definitely, yeah, Such I definitely, I'm happy that you came on and, uh, we're able to talk and hopefully, um, you know, somebody in the Memphis area will see this and they're, they're like, yeah, I got to hire this dude. He's got great personality and great content as well. So, um, any, as I said, anything else? So, um, before you check me out, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say, check out uh, Louis page and, uh, angel of Azeroth. Because I would much, I would much prefer you checking them out than me. It would make me, it would make me personally just, it would make me happy. Like if you especially went to them and told them that's why you checked them out was me. There bro, you go. Yeah. I'll, you know what? Anybody who can prove me they did that, you get a free photo shoot. Done. There, there You're welcome. You go. <laughs> that that really helps him out because that that's a referral, and then that referral makes that person feel good. So Luis is going to feel good, and then also Angel Azaraz will feel good because she's like, oh. I got exposure because of him. I've got to hire him again. Oh, they're so much more important than I am. <laughs> you know, you know, I'm like a drop in the bucket compared to them guys. These guys are killing it. I don't know what I'm doing. So yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in to America's podcast. And uh, oh shoot, actually, before we end this, who do I need to have on next? No, you missed your chance. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm gonna say honestly, um, Angel of Azeroth, right? Because you're okay. talking about the cosplayer, there's another cosplayer for you, okay? Um, so she, she's in this area, yeah, she's yeah, okay, cool. I don't know, God, may need to let me ask her first. If she, oh, <laughs> let me ask her first if she's in this she's area, she's moved to like California, yeah, yeah, you know. Let's go ahead and let's just fuzz this part out. Can you do that? Can you do like a little sensor, <laughs> just blurry? Well, again, she, well, she's a Twitch streamer, so okay. I, I don't know if you know what I mean, yeah, 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 makes sense for safety. But um, I'll see. But not cool kid. All the same. Um, very interesting person. Fun to talk to. Um, um, I'm always gonna. I'm always gonna push my uh, my boy, Greg and Rod. He has a band. It's actually can't think of another. Look at me, Eric Pinrod. Okay. And Chris. God, his name is so hard. Grigolis. Um, Gr- Close regardless, I don't know. That's so hard. <laughs> All right, so those two guys, they're, they're two man band, and you should really check them out. Okay. They are. I call them the musicians. Musician. Okay. You're gonna see a lot of their photos I've taken of them, and I like them so much because they. And you should know this in music, right? There's a lot of beats that people hear and they like it, mm-hmm. but they're not very hard, are they? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Right? It's sort of just like, here's this, here's that, here's yeah. this. And people like it because they hear it so much it's repetitive because it's branding. And they kind of get stuck in their head that that's, that's good music. Well, what I love about Greg and Rod is somebody will hear it and they're like, hey, that's good music. All mm-hmm. right. That's awesome. But when you, hear the, when you see a musician who knows how to play those instruments, hear the music and mm-hmm. watch them play, they're just like... Does that make sense? That wow factor. And it's funny because they're blown away because they're like, dude, I'm over here doing this and you're doing that. Like, I can't. What do you want me to do here? Yeah. You know, these guys are going to town and they're instrumental, 100% instrumental of a uh, eight string guitar and drums and that's it. Mm. And they go to town and they absolutely kill it. And um, they're really, it's, it's awesome. It's, it's an enjoyable treat. And it's funny because even though I'm not a musician, I can't play. Yeah, yeah. I can't play nothing. Yeah. Right? Gun in my head, I'm dead. <laughs> right? It's done. It's OV. Uh, I could have played a chord to save my life. But because I, I, I go to some of these things, I, just, I I listen and I can hear it, right? And I distinctly know the difference. Okay. I can instantly tell the difference. And yeah. um, it's it's one of those things of, it's, it's so funny to me because I'll be at one of their concerts or something, right? And I'll be sitting there and you see these people who just show up to listen to music, right? And they're like... And you see them kind of just into it, and they're kind of grooving to it. And you see the musicians going. And they're looking at their friends, like, yeah. And like, it's funny. It's a funny reaction because both are grooving, but, like, whenever you see, like, the guitarist, like, 
click exactly mm. what's happening on the strings you know exactly yeah. what's going on on that they're just they're all in yeah. like i'm sold like i love this guy like i can't believe you're doing that how are you doing this so long yeah right and um yeah, I've seen that. I've seen a guy break his guitar on stage just playing it so hard. Yeah, just going to town. Nice. And it's it's real. It's real good. It's real enjoyable. Um, but it's instrumental, right? Yeah. And some people can't get past the concept of its music. But it's really one of those things of unless you're in music, you can't appreciate truly. In my mind, truly appreciate the kind of effort that's put in there. Sort of like mm-hmm. where everything is, where where this part is, where that part is. And even though I'm, I would argue I'm a novice, I don't fully understand it. Yeah. What I do understand is people. And when you see somebody who, you know, some guy who's just there to listen to music, just carry on and chat and just kind of be like, all right, this is pretty good. And bobbing his head and going along with it versus the guy who just got off set, like holding his head like this, like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a very it's a very stark difference between the two. And you instantly know that these guys up here, they're putting it in. You know what I mean? They're they're trying. So. Rig and Rod, uh, link description. <laughs> we'll get all we'll get all that. And the Patreon, don't forget the Patreon. Okay. I'll plug that as well. You should put yourself on. Uh, I want to <laughs> see you on, dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I double me. I, we thought about having Rachel on, like interviewing me or something you do like it. that, but I don't know. I'll be a live studio audience, dude. I'll be right back. <laughs> we'll fold up chair there. We'll have like claps and like yeah, programming. Perfect. <laughs> A little light up here saying applause. And yeah. <laughs> I'll do it. All right. Okay. So officially, thank you for tuning into to America's podcast, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Hey, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to the podcast. And if you would, hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button allows you to, well, subscribe to the podcast. And if you give me a like and give me a comment, well, that would help out as well. Commenting allows you to have a conversation with me, and liking it allows me to know that you actually like it. And if you dislike it, hit the dislike button twice. That's a real help out for me. So, comment, like, subscribe, and let's keep it rolling.